Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Tammy Meltzer. It's Tuesday, May 24th. I am chair of Manhattan community board 1 and it's 606 and we will call the meeting to order. So, thank you everybody for joining us as we normally do. We start with our public session. Um, which is the 1st part of our agenda. I'm going to call your names. If you are in the attendee section, please try and raise your hand so we can more quickly identify you. You will have um, a timer that you will see running to speak and the lovely team that we have here will uh, take care of the meet buttons for us. Alrighty, so I'm going to group, um, we're gonna start with Mary Perillo. Following Mary Perillo uh, will be Mary Dietrichs. And then Ben Savitsky. So let's find those three and we will start off. Okay, I'm gonna see Mary Perillo. Let's go to Mary Dietrich. We have to circle back to them, Tammy. Okay, Ben Savitsky. I think people yep. are surprised we're starting on them. Yep. <laughs> um, oh, wait, there's an MBD. That might be Mary Dietrich. Let me unmute MBD. I see you raising your hand. Perfect. You can unmute. Hi, good How do you do? And sorry, I don't know why I'm MBD. Um, uh, my name is Mary Dierix, and I'm here to speak about 123 Greenwich to support the resolution. Um, I live uh, nearby at 125 Cedar Street, and um, the reason that I support the resolution uh, primarily is so that the front door will not be on Greenwich Street and will be on Trinity Place. Um, that's the most important thing uh, to me and to my neighbors. Um, we would have a lot of traffic on Greenwich, which is a narrow street, and on Cedar, which is the only street going west um, uh, down here. Um, we have the security right around the corner. So, you know, you've got a uh, Sally Fort right around the corner, and we are now blessed with um, many, many tourists. I'm sorry, is she speaking? Because I can't hear her. Uh, yes, she is, Lucy. Oh, so. I'm sorry. That's why the timer didn't go. Um... Okay. I, I'm sorry, Mary, just give Lucy a second. There we go, Mary, you're, you're, you're live. Start again. Okay. Um, uh, my name is Mary Dierix and I'm here to support the resolution for 123 Greenwich Street. Um, I live at 125 Cedar, which is just down the block. Um, our, my main purpose in supporting the resolution is so that the front door to what's going to be a club is not going to be on Greenwich Street, but will be on Trinity Place. Um, we have traffic, a lot of traffic going down Cedar, the only West Street. Uh, we have a security sally port around the corner on Greenwich. We're now blessed with uh, most of the tourists having come back. So we have a lot of tourists on Greenwich. Um, and um, we, um, and I said, we have a lot of traffic. It's very, very important for us that the uh, front door be on Trinity Place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for joining us. We're going to go to Ben, whose hand is up next, uh, Savitsky. And after Ben Savitsky, if we don't find Mary Perillo, we're going to go to Kathleen Moore. Thank you so much. Ben, um, Lucian, you ready? Yep, I see you, Ben. You can unmute yourself now. Hi, good evening, Ben Savitsky. Uh, I represent the application, the applicant for uh, Gitano NYC LLC. They're applying for a seasonal license at 125 Carter Road. We're just here tonight because we wanted to let the community board know that um, we're excited to pursue this opportunity on Governor's Island. Um, the applicant's a great applicant. They have the support of Governor's Island and that, um, everybody's pretty eager for this to open this summer. Um, and we hope you come out. I'm here if there are any questions on the application and I'll, uh, I'll be around all night. Thank you. Uh, wow, Ben, that was super, super quick. You have actually a couple more seconds. Do you need anything else? 
I'm gonna. I have nothing else to say right now, and I'll cede my time to the rest of the community board. Thank you, guys. Wow, Ben, thanks, um, and thank you for sticking around for when we hear your resolution. I'm gonna move to Kathleen Moore, and Kathleen, if you don't mind putting your hand up, that would be lovely. I'm not seeing a Kathleen Moore. Okay. Um, not seeing Kathleen Moore. Let's move along to the next name on the list. I do see hands up for attendees. So let's uh, give me one sec. Okay. Let's do Kathleen Moore. Then let's do Kim Snyder and Charles Lay, if you see them. Yes, I do. Kim Snyder, you put your hand back up. So we'll go you are. so Jim Snyder, I, Child Lay, uh, Charles Lay, and then Jan Lee. Okay. Okay, Kim, you can unmute. Kim Snyder, I'm the daughter of Kit Yin Snyder, who created the sculpture and pavement design justice. First, I want to thank CB1 members for their support of my mother's and Richard's artwork. It was at a CB1 meeting on December 21st where I first understood the scope of the borough based jails project and its permanent impact on the artwork. Prior to that, my mother and I had had a total of two Zoom meetings with DDC and DCA where they discussed dismantling, storage, and reassembly. But it wasn't until that hurried late December meeting that I understood the detention center and the tombs would be demolished and replaced by one megastructure over a period of seven years. Let's be real. A single megastructure leaves no room for her sculpture. There will be no space for seven pillars of justice, no bridge of size on which to place a throne of Solomon. At your meeting, I understood the permanence of the removal of the collaborative artwork she and Richard had created. I was appalled at hearing of the DCA's new artwork selection process planned to start five or so years from now. The city intends to destroy my mother's legacy here in Chinatown, her first home as an immigrant from China at the age of 15. Kit and Richard have filed a federal lawsuit under the Visual Artists' Rights Act, VARA. Kit is adamantly opposed to the removal of her artwork from its site. She doesn't want her art in indefinite storage on Rikers Island, becoming, in her words, a prisoner. Justice took seven and a half years to make. In the process of hand making the stainless steel bricks, my mother became afflicted with carpal tunnel syndrome which ended her professional life as a sculptor. My mother is opposed to the destruction of the pavement design, which says good judgment. This was a message of hope for the detainees to be seen from above. Years ago, the DOC painted yellow lines across the Chinese characters in public space for parking. When she complained, she was told they had run out of money for underground parking. With this track record, can we trust the city to safely remove the art? No. Do we believe that it's going to be reinstalled? No. Thank you. We'll let that just sit a minute. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, we are well aligned with you, as you know. Charles Lay, you are next. Charles, you can unmute. There you go. Got it right. Um, okay. Um, Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Charles Lai. I'm the executive director of Chong Park. We are the building complex that is right next door to the detention center. And we enthusiastically support the hiring of an independent community monitor for the jail project. Chong Park houses over 100 Chinatown old timers and they range from 65 years old to 108 years old. 
a number of small businesses and two non not for profits that include a daycare center and a community and health clinic. We are a reflection of the entire community. We want the four and five year olds in the daycare center to grow and live to at least 110. We want the infirm that uses the health clinic to stay strong like the 91 year old tenant that practices martial arts every morning on our rooftop garden and then runs off to hang out at Columbus Park. We need to keep our small businesses thriving and continue to contribute to the local economy. We want certain needs, we, we most certainly need to, to ensure healthy environments for the hundreds of workers, visitors, and patrons throughout the complex. In order to do that, we must make sure the jail demolition and construction is doing right by all of these people, Chong Park and the surrounding neighborhood. An independent monitor will go a long way to making sure the air is safe from any toxins, the, air, the sound and the noise minimized, the vibrations, demolition, and construction will not damage any of the nearby buildings, especially Chong Park. With that said, we enthusiastically support the community board's advocacy for an independent monitor for this project. Thank you. Charles, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for continually advocating um, and the members for NUBC. All right, let's um, who do we have next, Lucian? Um, well, we have uh, hands up. Let me see. Uh, you want to let's do, we could do Dan. Ackerman. Okay, Dan Ackerman, you are una you are able to unmute now. And th and then when he's done, we'll see if we can find those who were not on before. Sounds good. All right. So there, uh, I'm here today both as a as the president of the Battery Alliance, but also as a longtime resident of Battery Park City. And as was discussed previously in this committee, um, Senator Kavanaugh has introduced two bills that would impact the community. S9031A, which passed earlier today on uh, creating majority local representation on the Battery Park City Authority, um, which we now we need the assembly counterpart to pass, and S9032, um, which includes a number of provisions, including extension of the ground lease, expanding expansion of certain state programs to residents of Battery Park City, and an extremely convoluted um, rebate system as part of subpart C. And I'm here to say. Um, as the community has previously said, we have grave concerns with that subpart C and frankly have even greater concerns as we've learned that Brookfield, a foreign corporation, has had ground le a ground lease freeze through 2049 while the state has been pushing onto homeowners extensive increases that would bankrupt them. So um, due to the time constraints of the legislative session, I'd like to voice my um, strong kind of request on behalf of the, the community that S9032 um, moves forward without subpart C due to the complexity and the um, regular issue of corporations getting sweetheart deals on, on, the, on the shoulders of homeowners. That needs to be further discussed um, and, and should not be pushed through the Senate in its current form. So again, as a community, we support S9032 subpart A, B, and D, not subpart C, and that should be removed and uh, bring closer parity with the sweetheart deal corporations have gotten rather than put more on the shoulders of homeowners um, who support local businesses, pay taxes here, uh, et cetera. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and thank you for speaking up. Um, we appreciate Tammy, it. Kathleen yep. Moore is here. Okay, let's go back to Kathleen Moore because we called her earlier. Okay. Kathleen, you. you're able to unmute yourself now. Okay, you're on mute, Kathleen. You can speak. All right, I'm I'm here to speak uh, regarding um, the proposal to uh, uh, move the entrance of um, the proposed um, what 123 Granite Street um, site to Trinity Place. It is currently, I get, I guess that it's being considered to be on Granite Street. Um, that would be a total disaster for. Uh, our little neighborhood, which has been uh, 
subject to disaster after disaster. Uh, we, we live on Cedar Street, which would be the only um, entrance, no, actually the only westbound entrance to Granite Street to get to that entrance. We, our street is so narrow that one cannot, um, no two cars, one cannot park a car and drive a car past that parked car. It is too narrow. Uh, it is one block long and it ends in a dead end at Granite Street. The, uh, the idea of traffic on Granite Street um, with a site like that would, is just horrendous. Uh, Trinity Place, on the other hand, is, is wide and is um, at the moment uh, not terribly crowded in traffic. There appears to be no logical reason for the entrance to be on Granite Street. We're also getting, uh, we have, we're surrounded by hotels and, and we're getting a new, um, very, very, very tall uh, apartment and hotel building, uh, the Vignoli building at 125 Granite Street right next door. That will add to the traffic in this area and we are getting site number five of the World Trade Center built right in that area across the street. So I am um, very much in favor of the resolution that the board is considering tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and thank you for speaking up. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to move Kath from Kathleen to um, Dan. If you've already spoken, let's put your hand down. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to move to Jan Lee. And ask yeah, you Stephen Fan. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes sir. Welcome. First, I want to thank uh, CB1 for its continued analysis with virtually every aspect of the Manhattan Borough Base Jail project. Uh, without your vigilance and analysis and um, really on the ground viewpoint, uh, we would not actually have all the facts in front of us that we are able to analyze today. With that said, we strongly uh, support, as Charlie Lai had said, uh, an independent monitor because uh, we cannot simply rely on our own uh, volunteers to be there analyzing every aspect of such a complicated issue. And so we very much support an uh, independent monitor. We also want to express our great admiration for the two artists who uh, are fighting for their rights. We want to also make clear that NUBC has been consistent in amplifying and elevating the rights of those in our community whose rights have been trampled for the last many, many, many years. And so this is hardly a recent fight that we are engaging and supporting with um, the artists. We've actually been listening to many artists over the last three years to understand uh, their rights and how we can best amplify them. So we stand in great support of these two very brave artists, and we look forward to more of the art community in our district and the rest of the city to support them, because what happens in this case is uh, indicative of what will happen to public art in the future, particularly in marginalized communities. And I. I want to emphasize that for those who don't know, Kit Yin Snyder's work has had TV antennas affixed to it. Kit Yin Snyder's work has had paint uh, drawn over it. Kit Yin Snyder's work has been desecrated and we stand in support. We are happy that we could offer um, the support that she needs uh, to make this right. Uh, thank you very much, community board. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate your um, continued willingness to dialogue with us on it and help push it forward. All righty. Next, we're going to go to Pat Smith. We're going to do a Battery Park City loop of groups. So we'll do Pat Smith, Pamit Serana, Justine Kucha, and then we're going to go to Diane Lapson, Diane Stein. Okay. Speak. Welcome. Okay. Uh, for those of you who do not know, the Battery Park City Homeowners Coalition is made up of the 18 elected condo board presidents in Battery Park City. 
So this is a group that legitimately speaks for the homeowners of Battery Park City. Uh, this is the group that successfully negotiated the 2011 ground rent deal and is now working to update that group, that, uh, that, that deal, that negotiation. This group met on May 16th overwhelmingly supported Senator Kavanaugh's bill 9031A, which that's the bill that would give a uh, home rule to the Battery Park City Authority. That bill passed today in the state Senate 60 to one. We're urging everyone to reach out to the state assembly members. That'd be Uline New, that would be uh, Deborah Glick, and would be uh, Charles Fall and get this bill through the assembly, put it over the top. And the same night, the same meeting, this group overwhelmingly opposed Senator S-9032. And that is Senator Kavanaugh's attempt to address the problem with ground rents at Battery Park City. I think he meant well. I think a lot of work went into it, but he missed it. Let me read to you from the statement that was unanimously approved. We have serious reservations about this legislation, especially its close similarity to a BPCA proposal, which was unveiled on the same day your bill was introduced. We are urging Battery Park City homeowners to refuse to complete a BPCA survey, which asks personal financial information, including household income. Both S-9032 and the BPC proposal. Yeah, wrap it up, Pat. Okay, uh, next speaker, Tammy. Okay, thank you very much, Pat Smith. I am sure that uh, Pramit Serrano will take up right after you, and then Justine Kucha. And then after that, I understand Mar um, Maria Perillo is on. Pamit? I am not seeing Pamit. Let's see, is Pamit signed on in a different way? I'll see if we can find him. Let's go to Justine. Okay. Justine, you can unmute yourself? Yep, I'm here. Thank you so much. So um, I'm just going to reiterate what, uh, what Pat said. Um, the, the Battery Park City Homeowners Coalition was, I think we had just gotten the bills, both bills presented to us that afternoon. So we went through them, we tried to get a, a fair understanding of it. And I will say that in, in conjunction with what uh, Dan Ackerman was saying, it seems as if uh, parts A and B um, that refer to uh, Scree and Dree and some other state programs, they, they appear to be something that would be acceptable but what was an issue for the homeowners because they had questions about what they were doing and what Senator Kavanaugh, what the effect of Senator Kavanaugh's legislation as written would be, that we said we want to, we want, were, we rejected it. I mean, that was the vote of the homeowners coalition to reject it. Um, and part D, which is an extension of the ground lease between the Battery Park City Authority and the state. Not with individual homeowners or uh, condo owners. It's just between the, the authority and the state to extend their ability to have the ground lease extension. That once again, it's confusing because what does that have to do with the individual buildings? But in a vacuum, it seems like what we were, what we were told is that you need to do that first before you can go and extend it to the individual buildings. But again, in a vacuum, it seemed to make sense. Um, but where Pat was going is that the homeowners coalition has commended. Um, Senator Kavanaugh for the rule, as he calls it, bill. Um, and then we had, he saw his grave reservations because we didn't quite understand it all. And I appreciate the fact that um, Senator Kavanaugh had his folks show up at the um, executive committee meeting and did explain it. So I want to acknowledge that effort also, but not everybody was there. So I'll save my points for later. Thank you. Thank you, Justine. I think I hear where you're going on this. Um, all righty, let's move to Mary Perillo, who we could not find earlier. Mary, welcome. Hi, Mary. You can unmute your microphone now. 
being ahead, about 123 Greenwich. And um, yes, everything Kathleen said was true. There are two other hotels between us and the old American Exchange. But worst of all, Ten House, our firehouse right next door to this building, uses Greenwich Street as their main egress because of Liberty Street being part of the quote campus unquote. They don't go in and out Liberty Street anymore. So fire trucks will be held up as well. And sometimes when there's traffic on Greenwich, they will come up Cedar Street, little tiny Cedar Street the wrong way. And I've been double parked in front of the house and had to backwards up onto Trinity Place adding anything else to Greenwich Street right now, especially with five world trade on the way is a really big mistake. So I hope you can uh, consider that in your reso. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary, for coming. Okay, moving along, let's do Diane Lapson, Diane Stein. So the two Dianes, mm -hmm. then we're gonna hear from Mimi and then Graham. Okay, I may have accidentally lowered Diane Lapson's hand. Let me just find you, Diane. Okay, Diane, you can unmute yourself now. Diane Lapson. Welcome, Diane. Diane? I think okay. you got the wrong Diane. You, you have it from... Diane Stein. This is Diane Stein. Um, Diane Stein, you are welcome to chat because we have both. So you're up first then. No oh, problem. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Diane Stein. Uh, for identification purposes, I'm a public member of the Community Board One Quality of Life. And I'm here speaking to in support of the resolution to fix the cobblestone streets in Tribeca. Diane Lapson has been trying to get the city to get this done for years and nothing's happened. These streets are unsafe for numerous groups of people, uh, mobility impaired, visually impaired, seniors, people in strollers, bicycles, and now one person has died as a result of complications from a fall and many others have been hurt. And, and anyway, these streets are landmark. This, resolu this resolution does not call for replacing the cobblestones with as asphalt. It asks basically for two things. One, a temporary emergency fix to be done as soon as possible to make these streets safer and more passable. And two, a longer term analysis to find a lasting solution to the problem so that we won't have to go through the same thing every few years. I don't think that's too much to ask. And for anyone who is considering voting no, I wish you could take a walk on Harrison Street between Greenwich and West Street because pictures don't do it justice. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much, uh, Diane. We appreciate you coming. And yes, uh, we appreciate your involvement in quality of life. Okay, uh, moving on, Diane Lapson. Howdy, can you hear me? We can, thank you. Okay. Hear you, Diane. Okay, I don't want to repeat everything that Diane Stein just said. I agree with her 100%. I just wanted to add that, yeah, I understand the last time there was controversy because the thought was that we were trying to just get rid of the cobblestones. I personally never wanted to get rid of the cobblestones, but I always felt that it wasn't maintained properly, and they started to... Um, disintegrate, uh, the system started to disintegrate just two years after they were installed. And there's a, <clears throat> there's an 18 month period where after that you cannot hold the person, the company responsible, the people who put it in. So the city was not going to um, ask for help and we were basically ignored. And my, my big concern is this, that it is very dangerous. It's really, really dangerous for the sake of all of the residents, not just Harrison Street, but all in lower Manhattan who have treacherously crossed the street. I'm just urging everybody to please support the immediate repair and the maintenance for everybody's sake. And especially we're all taxpaying citizens and we should not be ignored ever, especially after someone has died because of this and people have gotten very hurt. So I urge everyone 
to please let's work together and get this done. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for coming. Uh, note that Diane served our board for many, many, many years. So nice to hear your voice, if not see you in real life. Okay, moving on along, we're going to Mimi and then Graham. Good evening, everybody. I want to express my support for the um, need for public toilet access resolution. Um, I can say for everyone with confidence that we all need restrooms. Um, and I'm fairly certain that we've all found ourselves in the city with no access to a restroom when we were in need. <clears throat> um, I would like to emphasize that we've been working since January with CB5 and 6 and now CB4 to research how and well to overall learn how successful public restrooms have been maintained and funded in the city. And we are continuing to learn uh, further. Um, if you're interested in uh, helping us along with our future restroom resolutions, um, you know, please participate. Um, you know, we need all the feedback that we can get. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mimi. Moving along to Graham Birchall. I'm you, Graham. At the downtown boathouse at Pier 26. And in the normal year, you guys would come to our boathouse for a community board meeting this time of year. So clearly that's not happening. But if you want to come, you can come. And if you don't want to do it in site, we'll put you in boats. Speaking of which, we are open to the public. Uh, started last week, so please uh, come and use your local harbor. You paid to clean it up about $20 billion. So, and then lastly, um, on this Saturday, we will reach um, a half million people kayaking at the, at, at the downtown boathouse. And thank you very much for all your support over the last 25 years. That's how we got there. But uh, mostly, Please, uh, summer is here. Uh, come and get in the boat. Price is right. Right. Hope to see you. Bye. And we do have a wish to come back to uh, the boathouse, just so you know. But now, because CB1 is going to be hybrid after June 14, we need to ensure a robust Wi Fi availability. So we're happy to talk to you about coming back. If not, we're happy to talk to you about maybe doing a get together by your lovely boats and having a CB1 day that we all come and uh, do it more as a social thing. Because again, it's a use it or lose it for our harbor and we want more access. So thank you. Okay. So Wi-Fi. All right, we'll work on it. All right. See you have it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a couple other members of the public that we're going to recognize. We have six minutes left until we do our public session on open meetings law. And during that time, there's uh, one or two speakers who have signed up, so they will be in that public hearing portion that we are required. Um, in the meantime, I do see a couple who signed up who I may have inadvertently missed. So Kelly McGowan, um, talking about Battery Park City, and Roger Byram are the next two up. Kelly, you can unmute. The comments that Dan and Pat Smith and Justine said about the uh, ground rent um, legislation by Kavanaugh, where we appreciate the majority rule res um, bill that passed in the Senate, we need to get that passed in the Assembly. But we have <clears throat> grave reservations about the in the income verification and the income uh, litmus tests. And I would just add that any bill like that needs to be thoughtfully and carefully um, crafted and thought through of the unintended consequences. And I personally object to having that done at the last week of the legislative session. There's almost no chance that that's going to result in a well-crafted uh, bill that'll help the overall community. So we, um, we certainly don't want that part C to be included. The other measures we're fine with um, and, 
while I just have the floor about the, I echo the comments on the cobblestone having riding a Vespa or a bicycle, those that streets are particularly dangerous dangerous for two wheeled bike uh, two wheeled vehicles as well. And I would love to see if they if they remediate them to include a bike lane like you do at um, Canal Street between Canal and uh, down Seventh Avenue and Barrack Street. So that should be mandatory in any cobblestone street. So with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kelly, for coming. Um, we're going to do Roger Byram next, and then I have a couple others. And this is a hey. sort of before Roger starts. Just a general reminder for the public: you do need to sign up if you're going to speak normally right before six. I see that uh, you know there's some people who signed up later, but six o'clock is usually our cutoff for speaking times. Roger, you're up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tammy. And I'm very excited to hear that we're going hybrid on. Uh, after June, it's been a long, long time since I've seen everyone. Um, thank you for recognizing me. <clears throat> I'm speaking about um, 60 Wall Street. Um, I'm uh, a public member of uh, the Landmarks Committee and was uh, for 20 years the chair of the Landmarks Committee. Um, and I strongly support the resolution uh, as presented to reject the application. But um, Alice has helped me, Alice Blank has helped me uh, be reminded that when the building was about to be opened in 1980, 1998, forgive me, um, Paul Goldberger, the critic for the architectural critic for the New York Times, said this about this building. Like its distinguished old neighbors, this building pays attention to the street. It's not a piece of sculpture plopped down or on space, but a building designed to strengthen the fabric of streets of which it is part of. On Wall Street, there is a strong granite base echoing in an abstracted form the columned facade of 55 Wall Street, the old Citibank headquarters, right across the street. And as you see in the resolution, the whole purpose of the Landmarks Commission was to ensure that 60 Wall Street was respectful and harmonious with 55 Wall Street. And I know um, Kevin can do something to address this, but what is being pro proposed right now is not harmonious at all. And I hope you will support us to ask Kevin uh, Roche to go back and find something that is harmonious. Thank you. Thank you, Roger Byram. And uh, for the record, Roger is one of the public members of the Landmarks Committee and a former chair of the committee itself. All righty, let's move on. We're going to recognize John Dunner and then Robert Bishop and then Maggie Curtis. Are you, may I unmute yourself now? Tammy, you may want to move on uh, while we wait for Mr. Donner to unmute. Yep, no problem. Let's go to Robert. Look, no, it looks like they got it. Looks oh. like they got it. Awesome. There we go. John, you got it? You want to try it again? Unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, sure. we can. Sit a little closer to your computer, please. Uh, it's very hard to hear you. You're very far away from the microphone. Better. You're going to have to really yell at that mic. So um, I understand that I have limited time here. I live at 71 Nassau. Uh, I represent the board and um, other community members that live here. We've previously opposed the liquor license for 24 uh, John Street, the Artisan Hotel. Um, again, apologize for signing up late today, but just found out today that that um, although the board had previously uh, recommended denial of their liquor license outright, 
Um, they're still pursuing the liquor license and um, we, we still have the same objections in violation of the 500 foot rule. Um, no benefit to the community. Uh, understand that they presented about two weeks ago. We were supposed to be included in those conversations. Nobody ever reached out to us and we're extremely disappointed in that. Um, and again, we have concerns that they're moving forward when this was previously denied at least twice. That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Bishop and Mr. Dunner. Moving on to the next speaker. Apologies on that. Lucian, did you find the next one? Yeah, Maggie Curtis, you may unmute now. Welcome, Maggie. Maggie, we're not hearing your microphone. <clears throat> I think we should move on to the next speaker while Maggie um, troubleshoots her microphone setup. That's fine. Let's okay. go to Robert Bishop. Okay, Robert Bishop, you are now able to unmute. Hi, Robert. Welcome to Community Board One. Robert. Robert. Okay, not hearing Robert. We're going to put him back on mute. Let's see if Maggie can figure out her microphone and then we can move forward. All right, I just moved Maggie over to panelists just to try that. Maggie, can you unmute yourself? Hey, is that any better? Are you That's ready? great. Yes, yes. Thank, yes. You so much, Thank you all so much for your patience. Um, so I'm joining with Hudson River Park. Uh, I'm excited to just share with everybody um, a small window of our over 260 programs that are happening in the park this summer. Um, we do a lot with uh, River Discovery and the Estuarine Sanctuary and waters surrounding the four mile footprint. Um, so we have an event coming up this June 2nd called Meet the Fishes. It's an opportunity to explore the local wildlife in the Hudson River Park. Um, we do programming from river discovery to family to music, um, five days a week programming of fitness. Um, we have a lot of dance programming as well. We have participatory dance every Tuesday. And we have our Hudson River Dance Festival coming up June 9th and 10th. We also do programming uh, along the Four Mile Footprint for music. We have a Friday night music series um, June through the end of Labor Day. We have a Jazz at Purity 4 series. Um, Blues Barbecue is one of our flagship festivals. Um, and we have a lot of family programming. One specific to note is uh, Hudson River Kids down on Pier 25 every Monday at 4 p.m. Um, yeah, I'm just excited and hope to see everybody come out. We have an amazing asset. Thank you very much, Maggie, for coming and talking about it. If you need, do you wanna drop your link into the host and we will share it on the community board so we can make sure people get it there? Yeah, I would love to, I'll do that right now. Awesome, thank you. Join us in the park. Fantastic. So we're going to see if we can get back to figuring out um, if Mr. Bishop can do his mic. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know what it was before. Um, my name is Bob Bishop and I will shut that down for a second. Okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 Um, I'm here on behalf of 123 Greenwich Street, and I, I'm uh, responsible for uh, representing their interests in Albany 
Uh, we, uh, Senator Kavanaugh has introduced uh, Senate 9383, and we expect uh, Assemblywoman New to be introducing a companion bill uh, very quickly. And the purpose of the legislation is uh, very simple. Um, the Trinity uh, Place entrance is within 200 feet of a church. The Greenwich Street entrance is beyond the 200 foot limit. If we want to accommodate requests from the neighborhood to have our main entrance on Trinity Place, we need the state legislation, which would authorize us to subsequently um, apply for appropriate liquor licenses and go through the process with the community board uh, to uh, obtain those licenses. Uh, without the legislation, uh, we would be limited to um, a development that had Greenwich Street as the main entrance. That's really all I have to say about it. Well, certainly stick around. That would probably be the best idea that I could tell you at the moment. Um, all righty. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Bishop. I do see that there was um, another hand. Hang on just a quick sec. Um, because I saw them in there. Uh, Lucian, can you find Wendy Cassidy? Wendy Cassidy? Okay. And Wendy Cassidy would be. I, believe, I know exactly who that is because we spoke earlier. If she's still on, let's see. <clears throat> Does not look like they're still on. I'm going to scroll through again. Uh... There's a Wendy C in the panelists with their hand up. Oh, there's a panel. Oh, they're still in the panel section. Okay, well, that's Wendy Cassidy. Because I assumed it was Wendy Chapman, but that may be. <laughs> I did that earlier. Wendy Cassidy, welcome. You, I believe, are our last speaker in the public session, and then we move to our public hearing. Oh my well, gosh, yes. Yeah. So nice to finally talk to you. I feel like every time I try and talk, they always think I'm like Wendy Chapman, but I'm Wendy Cassidy. I will change my name for next time, I promise. I just wanted to talk about 250 Water Street and the things that are happening there. Um, we still are not receiving daily reports. Um, there were a bunch of violations that community members reported to the DEC and the DEC came out and took care of the small things. But as a community, we are concerned, we are worried, and we feel like our, our like concerns are not being taken very seriously. Um, yeah, that's all. But we still don't have daily reports from last Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. We're almost like a week away from those. So I just wanted to make the community board aware of this. Yeah, I know that Laura Dobbs is working quite uh, closely and I believe we have a working group meeting being set up. So we'll see what information we have. I do know that there is information shared as quickly as possible. Um, and if you need more of it, Lucian can connect you directly to where we store it on our site. Okay. Because I know it's, a, it's, it's, it can be overwhelming. There's a lot of great information that we have to share. Okay. And thank you so much for coming. The Wendy that's not Chapman, the Wendy that's Cassidy. With that, we're going to close the public session. We're going to open the public hearing, which is required by law now for us as a community board, anytime that we are now virtual or hybrid. And this one is to discuss open meetings law. And our Mariama James has signed up to speak during the public hearing. Mariama, public hearing is now open. Take it away. Thank you, Tammy. I'm Mariama James. I'm this board's uh, treasurer and the co-chair of the quality of life, co-chair or vice chair of the quality of life committee here, but I'm speaking um, my own behalf tonight. These are my own words, you know, separate and apart from the board. So I've been, I've lived in this neighborhood my whole life and I've been a healthcare advocate here for at least 20 years. Um, and that is why I'm very much disturbed by the open meetings law, or at least my understanding or interpretation of it. Um, it effectively, is walking, if not crossing the line 
um, in my opinion, of HIPAA, uh, the ADA, perhaps the 14th Amendment um, in terms of privacy laws, and is is um, really troublesome and, and problematic. So, for example, uh, to actually to use um, Bob's example from last week, if someone is in, in their home uh, in their pajamas with their wig off, having just completed chemo, but wants to participate in the meeting, they should not have to reveal their health status um, or be open to or willing to come on camera and be recorded in that state um, against their will to participate in the meeting. That's not equal treatment. That's, that's not equity. Um, and that's why I feel that it's a violation of privacy laws because it's effectively forcing someone to reveal their health status to the government. And um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive it's a violation of ADA and of uh, HIPAA. And it can also um, further, further marginalize people that can't afford equipment. Like um, right now, I need to send my laptop into the manufacturer to have my screen cracked, but I can afford to do that. Some people can't afford um, a, a laptop or a com or equipment that is up to up to the status um, that's necessary to be recorded every week. They don't have the bandwidth. They don't have the Wi-Fi. They can't afford it, and so it may be discriminatory against those people as well. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mariama. And um, it takes a village without a doubt. So taking a look through where we are here, I have no other people signed up to speak about this particular topic. So seeing no others, uh, we will close the public hearing at 6.58 and move on to the business of the board. So thank you very much for everyone who attended the public session and the public hearing. Please note that um, our next stop is a presentation by 60 Wall Street, who is requested an updated harmonious relationship report between the landmark building at 55 Wall and the exterior renovations um, proposed. They have 15 minutes and then we start our business session. So we will, within this 15 minute presentation, we will allow uh, the public to ask questions if they would like, as well as board members. Okay, so let's welcome our presenter. Lucian, Diana, we got uh, Brooke, that. Brooke has been moved over, um, Stephen Fan, and I'm gonna double check to see if there's anyone else to come over, but I think Brooke can probably start talking about this and let me know if there's anybody else I'm missing. Um, I actually, thank you so much. I don't even know if you can hear me. Uh, you need Melanie Myers and Hugh Trumbull are actually going to be presenting, but I thank you so much, Lucian. Rook, can you uh, speak a little closer to your laptop, please? Unfortunately, this is the best I can do, which is why I'm not talking tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, but if if you have Melanie Myers and Hugh Trumbull, they are our speaking parts. So that's who you really need. And I believe you can hear me. Can you? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so thank you for having us. And we'll just jump right in if that's okay with you. Um, my name is Melanie Myers. I'm a land use attorney with Freed Frank Harris Shriver and Jacobson representing the applicant. And we're here tonight to discuss a proposed change to the lower facade of 60 Wall Street, a late 1980s office building. 60 Wall received a special permit allowing for the transfer of development rights from the landmark 55 Wall Street across the street. And as part of that special permit, LPC issued a report commenting on the harmonious relationship between 55 Wall and the proposed new building at 60 Wall. So the owners of 60 Wall are now proposing an upgrade to the building facade to make it a more inviting addition to the Wall Street corridor. We presented the proposed change to the Landmarks and Preservation Committee on May 12th. A proposed resolution to the, deny the application failed at the committee level, but we were asked to present the proposal to the full board and we thank you for the opportunity to do so. So we heard a couple of things. We heard several members of the committee indicating some support for the change, seeing it as an improvement over the heavy 
manner, somewhat uninviting base that exists today. And we also heard comments from two committee members who were looking for a more historic facade treatment with uh, a more substantial base or plinth element, round, more massive columns, and a different treatment of the secondary facade. So we believe that the proposal that we will show is an inviting and superior design, one that maintains a harmonious relationship with 55 wall through its use of materials, columns, screening, um, elements that all are reflective of 55 wall, but modern in feel. Um, I'll turn it over to Hugh Trumbull of KPF in a minute, but I did want to touch on three things before doing so. Um, first, just to be clear, we're not here for the more typical certificate of appropriateness review, where a proposal would directly alter a landmark. Rather, the harmonious relationship analysis is a general assessment of the relation created between a new non-historic building and a landmark in terms of materials, street wall character, and context. And to be clear, 60 Wall is not a landmark and it is not located in a historic district. Second, and if you could move to the next slide, the harmonious relationship analysis is not based on false historicism. Excerpts from the uh, 1980s LPC report are on the screen. And the commission's comments focused on the building base and the creation of a strong street wall, the use of a colonnade element, the use of stone, and the transition of base to tower, elements that we believe this proposal achieves. But as a summary, LPC made it clear, even in 1984, that it was not looking for replication of 55 Wall Street or an historic architectural style, but rather saw the architecture of 60 Wall as a contemporary response to 55 and its context. In other words, embracing a contemporary aesthetic in a non-historic building was important um, to LPC then, and in our view remains the more honest approach and appropriate response today. And finally, and this is just a point of clarification, the harmonious relationship report issued by LPC related to the development rights transfer from 55 Wall Street. In addition to that special permit, 60 Wall also received a floor area bonus for the inclusion of a covered pedestrian space within the building. And we'll be showing you one image of that public space in tonight's presentation. And we'll be coming back to you in the next months to present a more detailed proposal for the upgrades to that space. But the plans covered by for, for the covered pedestrian space are not before the board tonight. Um, so thank you for the time. I will now turn it over to Hugh to discuss the proposal and response to some of the comments we heard at the committee. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Lots of echo. We're going to ask everyone to uh, mute their microphones if they're not muted already, unless you're speaking. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry uh, for that. Uh, bit of bounce back. Um, if you move to the next slide, if you would, uh, Stephen. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Melanie, there's a very nice uh, kind of recap of the various uh, aspects of our application. Um, what, as architects, when we uh, took on the problem uh, of how to uh, reset the facade, we had uh, a lot of sensitivity to 55 Wall Street across the way. But we wanted to uh, incorporate a, uh, a new goal, and that was to make the building open up to the pop space. It was absolutely imperative to us that the building fit in. And I think in this image, you can see that it does that by uh, unifying the materiality of the street and resonating with the cadence of the columns uh, that are at 55. We feel that it really plays very nicely in the neighborhood and works to support a uh, pedestrian fabric, which is really quite special. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, uh, real quickly, looking from above, you can see the position of 60 Wall Street and its uh, corresponding building across the street, 55 Wall Street. Uh, the profiles of the building from up above are somewhat uh, separated from the experience at the street. We're in the cracked mud area of Manhattan, so this intimate street configuration is very important to the perception of buildings. Uh, if we go to the next slide. 
Here we can see a couple of views from the street. On the right and on the left are uh, oblique angles. And what's very important about the facade is that it sort of collapses as you look uh, down the long perspective. There is a uh, very special moment at 60 Wall Street um, when we're uh, facing Hanover. We get a perpendicular view to the facade and it's one moment where we can actually see deep into the building. And for us, one of the things that we wanted to try to do is to um, really make the pedestrian space accessible, which we feel is not in this image. We go to the next image. Um, taking a moment to look at the uh, 55 Wall Street, what we see is a historic building. And over 100 years ago, McKinley, Mead and White put a second uh, section to the building on top, creating two superimposed uh, classical orders, one Ionic, one uh, Corinthian, in a, a kind of alignment of columns, which gives the building a, a very beautiful, elegant verticality. Uh, the other thing that's quite interesting in this image is that the blank site across the street is actually what will become uh, the original 60 Wall Street. We go to the next image. This is the uh, series of drawings for the original proposal. You can see the tower is top, uh, base, and bottom, or base of the, the uh, sorry, top, middle, and base of the, the, the tower. The podium on the right is the base blown up. And what you see is a series of stacked, kind of Egyptian esque types of architecture in more or less three layers that then rest on a series of columns down below. And that becomes the arc arcade or the, uh, the colonnade that runs at the base of the building. Our proposal in the next image uh, essentially mirrors that. All of the, the elements are there, but what we have done is to really think about the McKinney Mead and White stacking of columns and transpose those into a very uh, simple screen that gets overlaid, stacked on top, but also gets nested. So that it becomes almost a harmonic relationship between the foreground and the background, as well as top and bottom. And in that way, we feel that it has a lot of resonation with 55. Uh, if you go to the next image, you can see here that the existing Wall Street and our proposal keeps the exact same datums and those who are in alignment uh, with the original uh, um, proposal. Next. Looking at, at 60 Wall Street as it is today, we see uh, bundles of columns, uh, two pair over two pair, which makes uh, a fairly heavy um, uh, kind of base to the building that um, prohibits movement into the, the public space beyond. The glass behind those columns is dark. And the, the wall behind them is a little bit uh, disparate. Up above, you can start to see those stacks of what is Egyptian-esque uh, architecture and a kind of mannerist postmodern style, which is a heavy, heavy in character. If we go to the next image, our proposal uh, is a series of screens that changes in scale. And you can see the nesting within a series of columns then there's a, a screen that sits in, and then behind that is a uniform backdrop, and then behind that, as the, the screen starts to open up, the pop space becomes uh, revealed. Up above, you see the stacking of the second order, very much like what you have at 55. Uh, if we go to the next image. This is a plan view, somewhat of a, a NOLI plan that looks at the, the pop space or the public space rendered in white as the streets are rendered in white. So it's all about the pedestrian movement through the city. Remember we talked about Hanover Street and that wonderful access. Now we're trying to really allow that access to read through. So the pedestrian way through the pop space that links wall and pine together, and then also provides access to the MTA. It becomes very visible and very much a part of the pedestrian world. Uh, to the bottom of the page, 55 Wall Street, what you notice here is that's the Cipriani uh, uh, Hall. It is a story above the ground plan, and the arcade uh, colonnade that runs along the floor is actually a story higher. And it's a bit of a defensive mechanism to lift people up to the piano noble 
and uh, have you enter into a private space. For us across the street, we're going into a public space that we want immediately um, accessible to all those pedestrians that are walking along the street. Next. Uh, a quick image of the existing uh, pop space as it is today. The ceiling is brightly lit. The floor is uh, a little dark, hard to see people within the space, both from the outside and even when you're in the space. And next is our proposal, which is to bring in more light into the space. We're opening a skylight that comes in and then a minute huge, warning, Stephen, a huge green green wall uh, that opens up uh, and provides some, some green uh, urban park to the space. Next. Uh, looking into the, the space here, you can see how those earlier renderings uh, views down the street have now opened up to the pop space. We go to the next slide. Uh, you can see here in a series of images how we have embraced the vertical columns of 55 and incorporated it into our design. Next. Uh, here you can see the scale of the columns. Uh, they're at 55 on the left and the scale of our columns on the right. They're very much uh, in um, simpatico with one another in terms of scale and size. We go to the next image. And you can see here when you compare the existing condition against the proposed, how much more inviting the pop space becomes and it becomes central to uh, the public realm. Next. Looking at those uh, images on a frontal view, you can see the invitingness of the, uh, the green and the light that's, that's uh, in the proposal that draws you through to Pine Street. If you go to the next image, you can see this wonderful series of cadence of the screen, how it actually resonates with the, the screen that McKinley Mead in white uh, implemented in the upper story. If you go to the next image, you can see how we have very carefully worked throughout the street uh, with analysis and finding a beautiful limestone that fits perfectly with all of the, the, the street stones that mark. And then lastly, you can see here uh, a view of the street, which we think uh, 55 Wall Street, our proposal, our strong, elegant columns resonate with those that are of 55 that there is a harmonic, rhythmic relationship that unites the two sides of the streets together. It becomes a contemporary, sensitive response, holding the street wall, but yet uh, really to allow this pop, pop space to be an active player in the pedestrian realm. With that, I will turn the floor back over to the chair. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Stephen. I'm going to look for our hands it's up. Hugh, by the way. Two minutes of questions, if anybody has one. Uh, Gerald Forsberg, Alice Blank, in that order. And let's keep our questions to one minute. And then Roger Byram. One minute each, please. Thanks, Tammy. Um, I have two questions. Uh, one is, is Paramount the majority owner of this property? It was stated that Paramount was the owner. Yes, it's Paramount, and yes, Paramount is the majority owner currently. Correct. Thank you. And my other question is, uh, what other interventions to improve the transparency uh, while maintaining the current columns were were studied? Excuse me. Can you state? Sure. What other in interventions to improve the transparency of the facade were were uh, reviewed uh, other than removing the columns and or rather replacing the double columns with single columns? Were there other transparent interventions looked at, such as uh, maybe lightening up the glass at the rear? Yes, uh, as you saw in the image um, that we showed straight on, the existing condition has fairly dark Black glass, uh, as you look into the space, which uh, we are looking at low iron glass that will allow for that, that transparency to be um, increased. And you don't believe that the uh, low iron glass without uh, without removing the existing facade would, would be transparent enough, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, thanks. 
Next is Alice. Thank you so much. After Alice is Roger. Um, I think I'll sort of reserve questions maybe for next month when you come to describe the the uh, covered interior um, space. But I I I would say that um, I I, lo I look forward to knowing exactly what the square footage assessments are on and things like that. But anyway, um, I just really want to speak up um, as an architect. Um, first of all, I respect your presentation and and the ambition to to you know make something new at the site for your for your client. Um, however, um, I do also want to speak up for the great architect who in fact did this in what some would argue a great building and that would be Kevin Roche. Um, you know, I think that um, this this business that we're seeing a lot of where we take every postmodern building and assume it should be redone like we've seen recently at the AT&T is a tremendous mistake. The 1980s may have had many buildings that were not successful, but I would argue along with the Paul Goldberger quote that Roger Byron provided, um, it is in fact, as uh, uh, Goldberger stated, a building with staying power. And I will also quote that he said, like the best towers in the New York tradition, the Morgan building, which is the Wall Street building we're looking at, definitely manages to appear both romantic and all business at the same time. It is theatrical, and yet it seems very much at home in the limestone canyon of Wall Street. Roger also quoted the very specific reference to its harmonious relationship um, to the Wall Street strong granite base, um, which is ex which is an exceptionally contextual and fabulously idiosyncratic way to have achieved this relationship. And so. Um, I, for one, could never support something that is taking away something that is absolutely fine. And I would argue actually very, very good and others would as well. And so I think in some ways, um, the sort of uh, to, to describe your work as more inviting and that this is against a heavy mannered base, Egyptian X bundles of columns. I mean, that's precisely what gives this an extraordinary character. And um, not something that we want to lose too much of in the city. And understood that not every postmodern building is great. This one might be something we really want to take a, a, be a better look at. And um, mucking with its base while not looking all the way up is also a little bit tricky. Um, and so I would say that we're left with it, with all due respect, to kind of, sort of kind of a bland, a bit, a bit of a sterile re redo of a really. I would argue postmodern idiosyncratic folly, Alice. which doesn't very indeed very much indeed respect the context of the site. Thanks very much. Thank you, Alice. Roger, and then Bruce. You will have to unmute Roger. He's in the attendee section. Motion. Roger, you can speak now, or unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, as we discussed, you in the, in the landmarks committee, th there's a contradiction here. You'd say that you don't want a heavy base. The heavy base makes the pops dark, but then you say what you're presenting to us are strong columns. Um, I feel that the strong columns, to use your terminology for your design, are already there. And I think there's lots of modern techniques, whether it's through glass, through light, to make the pops more attractive, as that seems to be uh, one of your main goals. The other goal that you mentioned is that the, the traffic flow, the pedestrian flow is, is troubled by these beautiful, large, heavy based uh, Egyptian like columns. Um, but that's my flag for my business there. I'm there every day of the week and I don't find, I in fact walked there since we had the meeting, the flow is not obstructed by those heavy bases. And uh, so I think that the the, the 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 proposal is flawed for that reason. And we're going back to saying, you got the addition. The developer got the addition of the high rise uh, because they were being harmonious with 55 Wall Street. I think it's extremely disingenuous now to say you've got the high rise, so let's pull out all the beautiful stuff that was uh, designed to to get that um, a, a extra floor, floor set, uh, footage. We've seen this happening over and over again 
uh, on Water Street. All these pops are being torn apart uh, now that they've got the extra uh, uh, square footage above high. And I think that's a regrettable thing. And I agree with Alice. We'll be all very, very interested to see how you're proposing to work on the pops. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Going to Bruce Airman. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, so. This was. This caused rare uh, disharmony at the landmarks. Committee meeting, uh, I have no agenda regarding the. Developer who I don't know the people who presented the architect. But I am unclear as to why uh, a presentation was even made tonight. It's an extraordinary situation over my 21 years that a uh, presentation had to be made from committee, a full presentation before the board, when the resolution to reject this plan was itself rejected at the Landmarks Committee. In other words, a majority of the committee voted de facto in favor of this design. And while Roger and I very rarely disagree, to call them extremely disingenuous is so hyperbolic. This was a wonderful presentation. I can't tell you how many times I've walked by this building. The, the pop space is miserable and derelict. The proposal they made for the pop space is wonderful. This pres th this suggestion here is, if nothing else, benign. The 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 <laughs> Paul Goldberger, while a Pulitzer Prize winner, never met a star architect he didn't love, and that's the case in this analysis. The existing columns, as other architects on our committee said, are like clown show versions of the gorgeous columns across the street. Bruce? The, yeah, typical postmodern. Uh, Disney versions of columns. So I, my question after all, this is why were these people impelled to make a presentation today when it was not rejected? I will also say at the end of their presentation, they were told to come to the meeting if they want to apply their case. I mentioned that, well, <laughs> there is no resolution against them. So why would they have to? And the answer was, well, it's up to their lawyers. So I think this entire matter was very much mishandled. Why, why were Thank they? You, Bruce, we can take up the discussion of the business and what the chair decides for the committee, but not in this manner. If you have anything else to say about the presentation, please say it about the presentation because we need to move on. We have a very full agenda this evening. Okay, all I will say is that in my opinion, they've done a wonderful job, a masterful job. The committee voted de facto for it, and I wholeheartedly endorse this uh, this pres this change. Colin? Yeah, I would just move to limit debate to 7.30 on this topic. Uh, granted. And I actually think 730 is generous because that puts us 15 minutes late. Um, Alice, I'm a generous man. Alice, please take your hand down. Bruce, please take your hand down. Vicki and mm, Melanie Myers. Thank you, Tammy. I just no, wanted, no, yep, keep I going. Just want, I just wanted to reiterate once again that while it was a robust discussion on the committee, um, I do want to say that um no reference was made to modernism historicism or replica we simply tried to explain that we did not feel that this solution there are many solutions that this solution was harmonious with the Cipriani building across the street. I just want to make that clear. Um, we did not advocate for historicism. We advocated for a better solution. And while some of us have personal uh, preferences, we should keep them just to the architectural solution that is presented here by the architect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vicki. Do I have any other Vicki Colin? Melanie Myers. I, I'm part of the part of the, the presentation, but I did want to clarify the ownership since it was asked of me and I answered uh, because Paramount does have a partner in the building. It's GIC 
Paramount is the managing partner, does the leasing, and is the development partner. So I just wanted to clarify that point. Thank okay. you for your indulgence. Thank you very much. Having had all board members have an opportunity to speak at least once, um, and looking that I see no one in the public session. Timmy, I'm sorry, can we get clarification on that, on GIC? Is that a foreign corporation or a local corporation? Gerald, it has nothing to do with the work in front of us for what we do for the board. Okay, I understand. Will there be time for discussion on this matter later or was because I was under the impression this was simply for questions right now. Is the ownership germane to what we have to discuss looking up at the allowance at what they're looking for? I would like to make I would like the opportunity to make a statement regarding my my vote if this is the only time to do that. Is this the only time and I can keep it under a minute. You have 30 seconds and then we'll okay. close this. Okay, 30 time. seconds. I just want to say that an argument based on interpretation of a former architectural critic's interpretation of a deceased architect's moment in postmodernism is not, in my opinion, argument enough to determine whether the presented proposal is a harmonious relationship according to New York City standards. I would have preferred a discussion on what constitutes a harmonious relationship with the street. In contrast, while I fully support uh, making the pop space more inviting, I would prefer to see the, the building's owner improve the existing colonnade and facade as an effort at harmonious relationship with the building itself. It's my opinion, and I'm, I will be voting differently later on. I will be voting with, with the committee. It's my opinion that this disharmonious relationship with the building itself, taking away the base from the top, would in fact create a disharmonious relationship within the streetscape itself. Thank you. Thank you very much. And when we get to the committee, we'll have this discussion. Okay, no other hands are up. I'm going to close down the presentation. Thank you very much to the applicant for coming back. Thank you very much to the committee for the work. Um, and we are going to move forward from this presentation to the business session. So with that, we're going to adopt. Do I, I'm going to call for a motion to adopt the 2022 minutes. Do I have a second? Yes, second. Fantastic. That is a roll call vote. Mimi, please, or Colin, who's ever running it, take it away. Hey, it's me. Um, when you said 2020. Two, you meant like April? Yeah, April 2022. Cool, cool. Just wanted to make sure. <clears throat> um, let's see. Okay, got it. And Marusa. Blank. Yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy. Ron Kennedy votes yes. Yes. Cameron? Cameron, yes. Thank you. Cassell? Cassell, yes. Collie? Collie, yes. Thank you. Chang? Chang, yes. Thank you. Chapman? Chapman, yes. Thank you. Charcutian? Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Cole? Susan Cole? Susan is excused. She will not be here this evening. Thank you. Okay. Jess Coleman. Coleman votes yes. Thank you. Thank you. Corman. Corman yes. Thank you. Kucha. Kucha yes. Thank you. Curtis. Uh, Francis Curtis. Okay. Airman. Airman votes yes. Thank you. Flores? Flores, yes. Thank you. Flynn, yes. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. Thank you. Friedman? Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman? Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? 
Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Thank you. Ju? Yes. Thank you. Kay? Yes. Thank you. Canel? Canel votes yes. Thank you. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Copel? Copel, yes. Thank you. Lerner? Oops. Joe Lerner? Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson? Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn? Lynn, yes. Thank you. Lyon? Lyon, yes. Thank you. Mahahan? Or please, please help me with your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, Mahajan? Kanisha? I didn't see Kanisha here yet. Yeah. Okay. You hear? And can keep you moving. Okay. Yeah. If by any chance Kanisha is in the attendee section under a cell phone, please raise your hand. Uh, Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. McHugh? Megan McHugh? All right, Meltzer. Meltzer votes yes. Thank you, Minsley. Morton. Yes, votes yes. Minsley votes yes. Excellent. Thank you. Moore. Moore votes yes. Thank you, Robinson. Desiree Christina Robinson. She goes by Desi, I think. Desi? Let's say your last name and then your vote. I saw her earlier. I don't know where she went. I did too. Okay, we'll come back. Um, Schneck? Schneck votes yes. Excellent. Star? Star votes yes. Thank you. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song votes yes. Thank you. Vera Song? Song votes yes. Thank you. Townley? Bob Townley? He was here earlier, right? He was. Okay. Uh, Z? Ciao. All righty. You? You votes yes. All righty. And Zelter. Zelter votes yes. Thank you. Townley, I see that you are online. Can you unmute and vote? Keep in mind, folks, that past this point, if you're in the meeting, you've got to have the cameras on. Townley? Townley will be marked late. Okay. Um, Amoruso? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Good to hear your voice. All right. Thank, thank um, and you. yeah, and all the new joiners, you just made your first vote. Thank you. All right. So thank you to everybody. The public session is now closed. For those who are um, need to machinate Lucian, please share the link to that presentation for anybody who wants to take a second look at it. Uh, a resolution will be presented by Jason during new business at the end of the meeting and voted on. So you do have time to ponder and consider. Okay, uh, we're going to move forward then and do our updates from our elected officials. We have quite a few who have joined us this evening. Um, I need to check who's where because we ran a little bit late. So um, we'll do. I apologize, you know, Brian, you're usually first, but I did promise council member Marte he could go first because he's going in between two meetings and he asked. 
So right. if you're here, then you will go first tonight. Thank you, Tammy. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you at CB3 as well, but go. <laughs> Oh, cool. So it's great to see everyone. I just wanted to do a quick update on some of the things we've been doing on this week. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Community War One for writing a resolution based on the letter that um, I wrote and my colleagues supported from uh, Congress Member Nadler to State Senator Brian Kavanaugh, Assembly Member New, and Borough President Mark Levine in asking the state DEP to get us an independent monitor for the jail site at 124, 125 White Street. Um, as we all have been on these community meetings, when DDC reports to us, we always feel like it's inadequate. And because there is a timeline for this construction project and demolition, uh, we think it's crucial to have an independent monitor for this, especially since we know there are environmental concerns at that site and there is uh, a senior housing development on the same lot. And so, um, we will keep on pushing. We haven't gotten a response yet, but we did send a follow-up email uh, to make sure that this is expedited. Another letter that I wrote um, and was able to get the majority of my council uh, colleagues was to support uh, legislation that uh, State Senator Brian Kavanaugh just passed in the Senate. Uh, this was uh, um, S4937C, which will allow conversion of hotels uh, to housing, which would be great for new affordable housing stock, and this would just allow the process to expedite it and make it easier to do that. Uh, as many of us know, Lower Manhattan, we have a lot of hotels that went bankrupt during the pandemic, or a lot of them that aren't being used, and this would help us a lot to create a new housing stock, especially um, since we don't have many locations to build new housing. Um, in addition, I'm working on another letter with my colleagues in regards to 250 Water Street and some of the annoyance complaints and mitigation complaints that we've been hearing there. So um, that'll be coming out soon. And I've been working with with this, uh, with Brian Kavanaugh to to make sure that we have one that uh, we can actually get response to and, and immediate action to. Um, so I'll let him talk about 250 a little bit more. But I do encourage everyone on the community board and anyone listening to join the Children's First Rally uh, this Thursday at 8.30 a.m. Um, to call for more protection for our children and, and people that live around the site. Um, on the legislative front, we've been introducing quite a number of bills, but I just wanna highlight a few of them. Uh, intro 0175, which is to ban the 24-hour workday, specifically for home attendance. Uh, we'll be having a hearing on this either on the 31st or the first week of June. If you want to know more information, you can go to aniawoman.org uh, uh, and it'll kind of describe uh, much more about the abuses that have been happening for home care aides, especially ones that take care of some of our most vulnerable population. Um, intro 0340 is uh, asking DOT or forcing DOT to encourage bilingual street signs. Uh, there's a New York Times article about two months ago that showed that specifically in Chinatown, a lot of the street signs weren't being replaced with bilingual signs. And so this bill will help mandate that they replace any of the ones that um, haven't been uh, replaced with bilingual sign, but also create a citywide program to help other communities. As we all know, there's Chinatowns in, in Flushing and Sunset Park, you know, there's a Dominican population uh, uptown in Washington Heights. So this will allow council members and the public advocate to allow uh, bilingual street signs across the city, which I think uh, will encourage language justice um, throughout the five boroughs. And the last two I wanna talk about are, are, are close to home, uh, 0176. It's, uh, it's regarding 9-11 and making sure that the DOE keep records of any student and staff member that was within the 9-11 radius uh, for years to come. You know, there's been a lot of efforts to do outreach, but we feel like, and I know a lot of members of this community board feel like that outreach was inadequate. And so as, you know, decades pass, uh, we know that people will still have 9-11 related cancers. And I think it's paramount that the DOE maintain this records for forever. Um, and so hopefully we'll, we'll move on that one fairly quickly. And the last one I wanna discuss is intro 
0260, which will allow the city to create a website so then signing petitions can actually matter. You know, many of us sign petitions on petition.org or change.org. And, you know, it's great to kind of use it as an organizing method and, and amplify our voices. But I want the city to have its own website where we can sign petition. And after it hits a threshold, that agency or that department where we're trying to create change has to respond to the petition. Um, and so I look forward to pushing on this over the summer and in the fall and hopefully creating a system where some of our activism and voices will have a response. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know, many people that live in the seaport probably saw petition. Uh-oh, I think our council member froze. He might be holding very still. No, his camera just went off. Okay, so I'm going to assume that um, maybe he'll come back, but what we should do, because I don't see him at the moment, is move on. Chris, you still there? Looks like he's having some bandwidth. If you have a question for Council Member Marte, do me a favor, lower your hands now. I'm going to let... Um, Senator Kavanaugh go, and then we can put your hands back up um, and it's 1 minute for questions. So we can, because we have a full agenda tonight. Alrighty, so Senator Kavanaugh, and I apologize to council member Marte. I apologize to captain council member Marte too, but I'll, we'll, <laughs> I'll follow him to see if he's free. We'll talk about that. Um, I'll pass your apology along as well. Um, so, uh, just we're in the, I'll, I'll start with legislative staff. The legislative session ends next Thursday, June 2nd. So we've got a lot going on. Um, one, um, issue that tragically we constantly need to revisit is, uh, gun violence prevention. Uh, you know, we had this horrific incident in Buffalo. Uh, we had a recent apparently random shooting in the subway uh, in downtown. Uh, we're glad that apparently somebody has been identified and uh, is in police custody on that. And of course, there's a horrific incident if you haven't seen uh, in Texas that's still unfolding in a school. Um, I had joined, we had been working on gun violence prevention initiatives. Before, uh, I joined the governor shortly after Buffalo to announce a few of them. Uh, including making uh, what is sometimes called our red flag law, which I wrote and passed a couple of years ago, uh, making uh, state police uh, kind of requiring them to report to initiate that process when they believe that somebody uh, might be a danger to themselves or others. The incident, but the guy in the Buffalo incident had been uh, detained less than a year ago, and um, there was a mental health evaluation. Still trying to evaluate what actually happened in that circumstance, but. There's a perception that uh, there may be insufficient use of that tool, and it really is a critical tool that has reduced uh, gun violence related death in states where it's been implemented. And we're still apparently working on getting it properly implemented in New York. Um, <clears throat> we also, uh, the governor announced support for a bill I've had that is about promptly reporting recovery of crime guns so people can more quickly identify patterns and crimes that are going on. and. Um, and micro stamping, which is a bill that I've worked on for a long time, and is carried actually by Senator Hoyleman, uh, that would basically uh, put an alphanumeric stamp on shell casings uh, that are often recovered at uh, sites of crimes. So, but we, there's much more work we can do at the state level to improve our background checks to prevent trafficking, and of course, uh, you know, these problems will continue to be with us nationally until we get federal action and, and until um, the gun industry and their allies. Uh, in Congress uh, and in some states, uh, stop preventing, you know, some of the obvious steps we could take to prevent gun violence. We're also very cognizant that the Supreme Court um, appears poised to make it diff more difficult for us to regulate gun violence in New York, um, although there's no ruling yet. But, um, you know, looking at the direction that that's gone and the questions that were posed when it was argued before the court, uh, we're concerned about that and, you know, we'll be ready to react when that comes out. Um, on more local matters, um, I've got two pieces of legislation to relate to Battery Park City and to some work that's been done in this community board. First, we passed today uh, my legislation that would, would, uh, would add two seats to the Battery Park City board. 
um, and uh, make it such that a majority of the members must be residents of Battery Park City. Uh, so we're hoping to, you know, it's a little bit complicated what's going on with that issue in the assembly. Um, I'll leave it there unless there are a lot of questions, uh, but I'm uh, very happy we were able to get that passed quickly in the Senate. Um, and then the second bill is about affordability. I know there's been some discussion at the board and uh, you know, the executive committee and perhaps tonight, uh, but it's a bill that's intended to deal with a variety of affordability issues. Um, and it would allow SCRI and DRI and SHE and D, the uh, senior citizen and disabled uh, head of household rental uh, increase exemptions and uh, tax uh, rebates that are available for homeowners that are available in most places, but not in Battery Park City, mostly because the taxes there are pilots rather than uh, real estate taxes. Uh, so it would address that. It would also extend the ground lease, the underlying master lease on the property by 50 years to about, I think it's 2009, June 28th, 2021, 19, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it would also provide a rebate for both renters and homeowners uh, up to 150% of the area median income, which is about, uh, it's a little under $200,000 for a family of four. Um, and, you know, it's, it's indexed based on family size, um, but it would provide a rebate of any, that to offset any increases in the underlying rent, land rents on buildings people live in. And again, that, that would be available for both renters and homeowners. That is something we're hoping to move on. And I know the board is uh, discussing, I'm not sure if that discussion has already happened tonight, but I think there may be some discussion of that tonight. So I thought I'd make my pitch for it here. Um, we also passed, as, as Chris mentioned, our, a very important bill that will facilitate the conversion of hotels to permanent housing. We have hundreds of hotels that are closed now that are unlikely to be functioning as hotels anytime soon because of really drastic changes in the way people travel. Um, many of them are in places where, you know, they're not, these are not your marquee hotels in the middle of the city. We're hoping to us will be back and filling them again. Uh, but this is a really enormous opportunity to provide greater affordable housing. So we passed this bill that allows some regulatory flexibility to the city in particular uh, to uh, convert those more effectively. Uh, again, we passed in the Senate today. I'm hoping we can get that through the Senate, the Assembly, and uh, the, the mayor. I, I joined the mayor um, and the Hotel Trade Workers Union actually uh, in support in a press conference a couple of weeks ago in support of that. So the city's pushing it as well. We really do hope to get it done. And I thank uh, Chris Marte and uh, his colleagues in the city council for their very strong support for that as well. Um, we, uh, we, I, we also have a couple of bills on uh, SLA issues, which you'll be uh, considering. And of course, we uh, always await the community board's opinion on those. I'll leave it at that for now unless people have questions. Um, Chris mentioned 250 Water. We are working on noise, which has become a very big issue there. And on an ongoing basis, working with the community board and fellow elected officials and a broad coalition of community stakeholders on making sure that we're paying attention to the environmental impacts there. Um, Emily Lang uh, is, you know, my staffer will be, get, is working to get the next meeting on the books, hopefully in the next week or two. Um, okay. I think I will, uh, Oh, we did. We we have been pushing. I have mentioned this before here, but we're pushing for uh, a good response on the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan project. Um, we've had, had, I think, some preliminary, somewhat productive conversations with DOT um, and joined with uh, you know the borough president and Councilman Marte have also been you know very involved in that, and uh, we are hoping to have some real progress on that soon. Let me leave it there, unless people have questions. Uh, I appreciate that. We do have some questions. So here's what I'm going to do because council member Marte is back. Oh, okay. You, to, yeah. Why don't we, why don't we do a tag team here? We're going to, we're going to tag team. Chris had one more point and then if a community board member has a question, please direct your question to either one. Please no community board members literally no more than one minute. So we can move on with the day. Chris continue. Uh, yeah. My, my last point, sorry for getting cut off was uh, to support the blue school union. Um, the Blue School is a private school in the seaport, and their staff and teachers have been uh, today. They are picketing for better protection, health care, higher wages, and so that's where I'm wearing their button today. And you know, if you want to learn more, you can just go to their social media account at Blue School Union. Okay, fantastic. So I do see hands up. We're going to do 
in this order for community board members, please remember you have no more than one minute and direct it to either the council member or the senator. Wendy, Patrick, Mariama, Mark, and Vicki. I was the first. I'm going upside down today. Wendy. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to emphasize and support your um, asking for records to be held by the um, DOE and basically I'd, I'd actually ask um, all state agencies. Um, you know, I know the utility records are already gone for 9-11, but any agency that has tax records or this type of thing, uh, school board included. And, and one specific thing that I've learned is that the DOE does not have one point person or one phone number for students to call. And in your ask of the DOE, could you also ask for there to be one specific point of contact for this information, one office from you know now until when kids are 90 years old? Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. We can we can definitely add add that to the to the to the bill, and just ha ask it regardless if where the bill is just to make sure that if they can do it without it, that they do it. Okay, next. Uh, hi, hi, Senator, hi, council member. Um, I noticed in a tweet the other day that you both actually met with uh, Commissioner Rodriguez of DOT, um, Borough Commissioner Pinkar and uh, the Borough President was with you as well. And my question really is neither one of you can answer this. Uh, is whether uh, you all discussed the current status of the pedestrian mobility issues within the financial district, whether it was the make way for lower Manhattan plan or more specifically the $500,000 that had been allocated to DOT before the pandemic for the study uh, on the pedestrian mobility issues. And what, what can you tell us about that if that was discussed? So the, go ahead, you first, Chris. So the meeting was specifically about Brooklyn Bridge Park, Manhattan. Uh, but we actually followed up with DOT today regarding the make way for fire diet plan to see, have they done the study? Are they planning to do the study? So I can have more information at the next community board meeting, or if we find out sooner, I'll just follow up with you directly, Patrick. Thank you. And then I'll, I, I'll just add that I, I actually have two, I had a, I had two meetings with DOT that day. One is for the Brooklyn's, the BQE, the Brooklyn side. And I have a third meeting soon with the commissioner to talk about other district issues, uh, including uh, Canal Street. Um, and, uh, but I will, I will also, uh, you know, emphasize that, you know, these issues are important too. And, but I'll happy to take the council members lead on this as well. It's a part thanks, of thanks Senator, and, and it might be worth putting in your hands a copy of the Make Way for Lower Manhattan report. If you can get that to the commissioner, it would be appreciated. Thank you. Yep. Okay, next. Leave well, first, to my earlier point, we've now seen that even a councilman can lack the bandwidth to remain connected, and this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I wanted to do was get clarity first, or I wasn't sure what to think first, or get clarity first. When you, when Max first made the announcement on, on your behalf with regard to the 9-11 bill, I was very excited because I thought that it was going to be a bill like you just described. And then I was later like corrected, like, no, it's just a reporting bill. And now it seems like it is going to be a record keeping bill. So I just wanted to first make sure that that was the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So then thank you for that. Um, and I'm sure that there'll be many more conversations after this, but just to, the 9-11 community has experience with those records falling into the hands of the UFT and other people that they that shouldn't really have them. Um, so that's something to be careful of too because of uh, what they call FERPA, which is like the federal education privacy law, similar to HIPAA, uh, and the fact that those teachers no longer have a relationship with the students. You know, they've long since graduated. So we want to keep those, we want the records saved, but we want them protected too. Again, thanks. And board members, if you have spoken, please take your hands down. Next is Mark and then Vicki. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, by the way, uh, Councilman, for the 9-11 uh, uh, bill. I was a first responder and all that stuff is like really, really important. I just wanted to thank you for that. <laughs> uh, my comments were uh, Mr. Kavanaugh. You mentioned about the SLA stuff and we have that coming up tonight. Um, 
quickly, we uh, the I'm co-chair the licensing committee, and with regards to the 123 uh, Greenwich Street, uh, we had passed a resolution uh, requesting that the uh, provision that the 200 foot exemption not be granted, and then for some reason it went to executive committee. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, we felt that. Um, so we actually have dueling resolutions, so we're going to have to reconcile that tonight and somehow. Uh, but we felt that uh, we didn't have any information or enough information. Trinity didn't show up. Um, uh, we, there's traffic studies that we haven't seen. So we thought that the uh, application for the liquor license and the request for the street change, which could likely most likely happen, but the process here is very much flawed. Uh, that they should happen simultaneously and that this shouldn't get special treatment uh, in this particular case. Uh, so that's why the licensing committee voted not to approve it. But like I said, we're going to have to reconcile it. So if you can uh, stay tuned for that. We, we will be paying close attention. And again, I, I don't get involved in your internal board processes. Um, the legislative session does it adjourn next Thursday. So if a bill is required, this is high time for the yeah, board. Yeah. We just thought it was a, it was a self created uh, emergency by the applicant. There's really no. I, 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 I just I just like it is a it has been a public fact since uh, December or early January that the session will end on June second. I I don't I when when applicants come to me I say you need to talk to the community board. Uh, so I I don't I'm not opining one way or the other about the resolution or which I also as a general matter don't take positions on these things not thank just ones that require legislation thank but in you general, I let the guys thank, go first. thank you thank you Brian thank you Mark Vicki thanks Tammy thanks councilman thanks senator I wanted to uh, get a clarification on this bill uh conversion from hotels to residential can you uh, tell us if uh, any of the hotel owners slash developers were being offered tax breaks or any kind of public funding to do these projects, you know, like 421A or G or whatever we've come up with? No, I mean, sorry, um, there is a program that we have passed at the state level called Honda, cleverly named after a Japanese car. Uh, it's Housing Our Neighbors with Dignity Act. Uh, and that is a program that is intended to fund the conversion of hotels into affordable housing. And it really needs to be affordable housing. Um, we, what we are doing here is some, it, it allows for the city to have regulatory flexibility that they cannot do without state authorization. And it's two different kinds of flexibility. It allow, would allow them to convert a hotel that is in a place where it is not where residential use is not uh, permitted but it's within 400 feet of such a place these are typically going to be in industrial zones and in, probably not around here but industrial zones in places like Brooklyn and Queens um, and again uh, it ha would have to be close but not necessarily in a place um, and it's not as of right it would be with the approval of the city uh, as well and the second is to create more flexibility that would permit basically to use the same CFO uh, again with whatever changes are necessary to ensure that uh, it is safe and ready for occupancy as housing. Um, in those circumstances, uh, with an affordability, it would, again, this would have to be for a purpose of affordable housing, um, and they they would have the flexibility to do that. And again, we think there's a there are at least 200 hotels that are potentially uh, convertible around the city for this purpose and i would just note that these are these hotels all of them the city could as of right have people start living there um by, by using them as shelters so but um, ironically they can't even though shelters may be there for a very long time and families may be there for a long time they can't use them for permanent housing so this is intended to create permanent housing um but it's it, it may be that some of these buildings have gotten tax breaks in the past in some way but there's no, uh, this is not related to 421A. Uh, or any on. other, right. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to hear. While we need affordable housing and affordable housing that works with salaries and, and, and standard of living in New York, not, you know, a federal reference, I would plead that we stop giving these huge tax credits to owners. We shouldn't be grateful for them for doing work that they were going to do anyway. We have tons of poverty in New York, on New York State, and I'm really grateful. Please stick to it. We don't need to give.
give any more tax credits or any kind of public funding for you know this kind of uh, development. So thank you so much. You made me happy. Yeah, and current current Schwartz one anyway expires June fifteenth. And yeah, but I hear you're going to extend it. <laughs> I I and others have resisted. Uh, certainly, I'm sorry. I and others have vehemently okay. uh, resisted extending in its current form. There have been proposals from the governor and others uh, that are supposed to make it more uh, conducive of produce production of affordable housing, and I have not found them sufficient. Uh, I'm not saying that tax tax incentives should never be used for affordable housing, but I haven't seen a plan I support. And at this point, uh, I'm hoping we let it expire by next Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vicki. Um, I think uh, I have one question as a follow up to that, and that applies. When the last bill that was proposed for conversions of office buildings to affordable housing and housing in general, most of CB1 was left off that bill. There was a geographic restriction to it. Yes. Can, we, can we ensure that CB1 is well included and not left off? Yeah, there's there's no there's no geographic district. Sorry, this is this bill is limited by its terms to the city of New York uh, because it's a okay. it's an amendment of the multiple dwellings law which doesn't apply outside the city of New York. But there's Does no that, there's no other uh, geographic restriction restriction in the bill. Would that therefore be able to also include um, Battery Park City? It even though it is state land, it is within the confines of New York City. That is, it, it certainly seems likely, yeah. Sorry, yeah, the short answer is yes. Um, okay. To the extent to, it would permit, I mean, battery, buildings in Battery Park City still require certificates of occupancy and need to meet zoning. So this is a yep. this is flexibility on those issues. So yeah, I, 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 and it also, it it could be for Honda projects. So again, that's a state program. It could be, uh, for projects that are sponsored for affordability by the state or the city government with a regulatory agreement with either. So, yeah, I think it's certainly Perfect. flexible enough to include Battery Park City. Okay. Last question is Justine, and then we have uh, three of our elected reps on, which we're going to do after Justine. We're going to go to Hannah, Theo, and then Andrew Chang. And then we close this part of the minute. So, Justine, one minute. I'll be quick. Thanks so much. Um, Senator Kavanaugh, first of all, thank you for the bill. Um, for the um, one that passed the Senate today about um, yeah, representation on the Battery Park City Authority Board. That is a real boon, and thank you very much. And then secondly, kind of just to reiterate some of the things that Vicki was saying, um, 421A and those tax programs with the, with the benefit given to the developers and only getting 20% affordable housing, but the rest luxury housing, it's really a misnomer to say it's building affordable housing. It's building luxury housing with a nod to some affordability. And it needs to flip. And I guess I'd just like to say that, yeah, it's Vicky's clapping. Um, I would just like to say that that is something and I'm really looking forward to that. Those laws um, uh, expiring, expiring, yeah, and, and, and going away and nothing new of that nature coming back. What we really need to work on is figuring out a way to keep the middle class here. So yep. luxury, and I, if I, if, middle and luxury. If I knew how to clap on WebEx, Webex I would. Um, Thank you. Okay, uh, good. Woohoo! <laughs> I will. I will just say, like again, there may be room for using tax breaks to promote affordability, but the 421A. I, again, I was opposed to it at the time. I've been opposed to it continuously. I am opposed to let it. I am supportive of letting it die in its current form. And the governor proposed, proposed something called 485W. The numbers. Yes. Change. Um, and I put that as well. So yes, again, I'm not, I'm not saying to you never should tax breaks be used to promote affordability, but uh, I haven't seen a version of this that uh, meets the. It should. It should. It, the, the affordability needs to be adequate. The jobs need to be good, and we also should be making sure these are environmentally responsible projects if we're going to use tax breaks to incentivize them. So, uh, you know, again, it's, there's still a possibility there'll be a conversation about that, but nothing I've seen comes close to where we need to be. Thank you Perfect. so much and thank you. For thank your you, Justine. Advocacy. Thank you, Brian, for all of your time tonight. And we are now moving on to uh, Jerry Nadler's Congressman Nadler's representative, Hannah. Let's move. Hi, Hannah. Hannah. There, you yeah, there you are. You can speak. Hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay great. 
Hi, Hannah Wiener from Congressman Jerry Nather's office. I know that you have a very robust agenda tonight, so I will keep it brief. Uh, last week, the House passed two bills to address the supply shortage of infant formula facing the country. So the first one's called the Infant Formula Supplemental Appropriations Act, and that delivers 28 million in funding so that the FDA has the resources to address this shortage and maintain strict safety standards. The other bill was called the Access to Baby Formula Act, which will secure necessary flexibility for uh, the WIC program to help low-income families buy formula during the supply chain disruption. So if you or any parent or caretaker that you know um, need assistance in finding formula, uh, you can visit hhs.gov backslash formula, and they have listed available resources. Or if you run into anything, you're welcome to contact our office. You can give us a call at 212-367-7350. Uh, the House also passed the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act. Uh, this bill would, would create domestic terrorism offices over three federal agencies to combat the rising menace of homegrown violent extremism, white nationalism, and hate-fueled violence. We saw it in Buffalo. We know how important um, this is, so it goes to the Senate. Hopefully, it should be taken up on Thursday, and hopefully it'll get passed and sent to the President's desk. And the Judiciary Committee, Congressman Nadler chaired a hearing on the ongoing crisis in abortion care access. Um, he also joined um, with New Yorkers and Americans across the country on March 14th, who marched and rallied for abortion rights and reproductive freedom in the Bands Off Our Bodies events. So we will keep fighting to uh, preserve uh, women's right to control their own bodies and uh, reproductive choices. I know that it's something that I care passionately about and the Congressman does as well. On the local front, Congressman Nadler and Congresswoman Maloney and Velasquez introduced the Helicopter Safety and Noise Management Act, which would force the FAA to work with local Official. officials and advocates to create a plan to curb non-essential helicopter flights. I know that we've gotten an uptick of calls in the office, especially in Lower Manhattan, about the um, <laughs> negative impact on quality of life, their negative safety and environmental and health hazards. So we're continuing to push along um, this bill. Basically, it's we keep asking for it. It's time for the FAA to deliver. So uh, we will keep pushing forward. Um, so lastly, I will just say that I know that the redistricting maps came out. Officially, Congressman Nather in our office is representing this community till January 2023, and we will continue to do so. We will continue, you know, advocating and fighting for the issues that we've worked on. So feel free to call our office with any questions or concerns. You can reach out to me directly at hannah.wienerman at mail.house.gov, and um, I'll happily answer any questions. Yeah, I'm not going to say a word. Because we are not, we are not allowed to opine on anything politically. Um, so yes, I will. I will say, I and, and as a government representative, I can't either. Um, so I will happily talk offline. Okay. All righty. Uh, seeing no hands up, I will thank you very much for your time, Hannah, and have a lovely evening. Let's thank move on to Neo from uh, Assemblymember Yulene News Office. Did you find Theo in the attendee section? Theo, you can unmute yourself now. Assembly member Yulene New, uh, and I have a couple of updates to share with you tonight. Uh, first of all, on the legislative front, one, uh, we were dismayed to learn that the Supreme Court seems poised to overturn Roe v. Wade uh, in response to Assembly member New, assigned on to co sponsor a whole suite of bills, I think five or six, related to the topic, including a bill that would establish an abortion access fund, a bill ensuring that New York courts will not issue subpoenas in connection with out-of-state abortion proceedings, a bill providing legal protections for abortion providers, and a bill prohibiting the extradition of abortion providers. The governor looks poised to, to move on some of those, and we are proud to co-sponsor them. Uh, additionally, while we were on this very meeting, the Assembly was in session, and they voted to pass a bill of the Assembly members regarding uh, workers' compensation for those who participated in, in rescue, recovering, cleanup operations at the World Trade Center site. Uh, those claims, it was due to, to end this year, the ability to file workers' compensation claims based on uh, illnesses developed through that. This bill extends it for another several years. Finally, on the Battery Park City front, uh, there's a billion bills uh, floating around for that. We're happy that well, one, one of our bills, A8146, which doesn't have a, a Senate equivalent, but would control the rate of increase for ground rent, did pass the Housing Committee. And on regards to the bills that do have Senate equivalents, she has spoken with the Speaker 
and is looking forward to getting the, the bill regarding home rule and representation on the board um, to the floor before the end of session next week. On the community front, this month was uh, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. She went to several events uh, related to that. She passed a resolution commemorating the month. And this weekend, Saturday, let me pull up the exact date here, Saturday, May 28th at 12 o'clock in the New York Chinese Community Center, 62 Mott Street, we will be hosting an Asian Pacific American Heritage Month event. Um, so all are welcome to come and join that free to entry. There will be some activities, some music. There'll be awards handed out to certain prominent community members who, who've done a lot over the past year. And I believe there will be free ice cream. Uh, <laughs> those are, are my main points for tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions there may be. All righty. Uh, taking a look. I love uh, we're rolling right along. I see no hands up from the community board members. So thank you very much, Theo. And um, I will say we are supposed to move directly on to um, Andrew Chang from the borough president's office. But I do understand that Mark Levine is going to come and join us this evening. He just happens to be um, at another community board meeting. I know you're not surprised to hear that. Um, Andrew. Do you have an idea of how long he would be? Good, good, Andrew. Tammy? Yes. Hi. Uh, so, expect, uh, likely around 8 30 p.m okay so i think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the district manager's report we'll move in a little bit um so we can continue on with the business of the board and then come back when he's here i think that's fair in essence for timing so lucian reynolds take us away great um so i'll start with uh, the district managers of manhattan community the manhattan community boards began their work to plan for the next fiscal year's borough budget consultations. I know it feels like we've just finished this process, but uh, you know, the cycle continues. <clears throat> um, so everyone, you know, start uh, reading what you can about the, the budget uh, that's being finalized. And uh, once that is complete, um, we'll uh, reveal more about how we can get community board questions uh, in front of these agencies to inform our own budget discussions. Preparations are being made for the possible return to in-person meetings next month. Um, Tim will have a little bit more to say about that. Of course, all plans are subject to change with the new information, but CB1 will be prepared. Um, the, the the law makes uh, our in-person versus fully remote status uh, uh, contingent on uh, uh, states of emergency, declared states of emergency. So there's actually uh, quite a bit of un uncertainty around uh, whether or not those will be extended. Um, so we are doing the best we can with the information that's available. And with that, Tammy, I pass it on to you. Awesome. Let's hit up my slides for the chair report. Literally, I'm going to go as fast as possible because 813, we'll just let him go. Okay, so here's we are. Where is the chair? This is we've had a kind of a busy month. Thank you to Mariama for leading the downtown cannabis update for community board one. I hope everyone had a chance to tune in. Um, we have a great uh, collaboration. If you haven't seen the letter that was with CB1, 2, and 3, which we are sharing with all the other boards regarding the SLA questionnaire and the mayor's blueprint, which do not seem to align to the chartered responsibilities of the community boards. Um, I did, we did a walkthrough at the Trinity Commons with the team from the Five World Trade Center, CAT, Port Authority, and others. Um, and you can kind of see where we are um, and what's been going on. The one thing that is in there, if you haven't seen the governor's island redistricting letter that we did send to the judge, unfortunately, it does not look like that they changed the maps. I want to give a shout out to Senator, shout out to Senator Kavanaugh who actually highlighted the problem for us and let us know that that's a bit of an, an issue that we will have going forward. That Governor's Island, Liberty Island, and Ellis Island are all under the jurisdiction of Manhattan in terms of how everything operates and all their licenses and everything else come to Community Board 1. 
but the elected representative now for the islands are in Brooklyn. My next slide. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to the opening of the South Street Seaport summer launch. Uh, that should be fun. Uh, we, if you haven't seen, Paul and I spoke to a reporter for the Brooklyn Bridge Manhattan, trying to push that project along and put as much pressure as we can. Um, you know, the ESCR and EDC timelines, we have not heard from um, in terms of actual dates and paths for mitigation on the community. Congestion pricing panel, we haven't heard from either and hot off the presses, you've already heard. So at this point, we have five new board members, four are here. We told them they could each get a minute and they are welcome. We're gonna go in uh, alphabetical order. I would love for them to unmute themselves and introduce themselves because you will start to see them on committees for next month and we will be assigning mentors. If you are interested in being a mentor, please email me or the office directly and uh, off we go. So I'm going to start with Andrea because it starts with an A. Uh, Dr. Andrea Jew, welcome. Hi, um, I'm Andrea Jew. Um, I'm an ophthalmologist. My office is at 139 Center Street. Um, happy to be on the community board to just learn more about getting active and um, just being a better community member, I guess. That's it. Well, welcome. It's fantastic uh, to have you here. And as a reminder for everyone, especially for our new folks, can you please turn your cameras on? Because that is now a requirement of the law. And we've all voted, so you got to have a camera on. Okay. And that way, Andrea and everybody else can see you until we see you in person. Okay. Cody Lyon, you're next. Hi, my name is Cody Lyon. I am actually uh, representing Borough of Manhattan Community College, where I'm a staff writer in the public affairs department. Um, I've been working there for seven years and have worked in lower Manhattan for on and off for the past 20 years. Um, so um, I, I actually live in Brooklyn, but um, lower Manhattan, is, I'm a citizen of, of BMCC. So I'm here and I'm very excited to be part of this board. Welcome, thank you. Thank Des you. Desi Robinson. I saw Desi to start with. I don't know what if she disappeared. I don't see Desi, so we'll um uh, we're gonna move on to Morton Minsley. Um, can you hear me? I can. All right. Uh, good evening uh, to everybody. Nice to uh, see everyone. Um my name is Morton Minsley. I uh, live in uh, Plydai with uh, my wife and six-year-old son. My son uh, goes to a public school in the district as in first grade. Uh, I'm a lawyer. Uh, my office is uh, near the courts, uh, a couple, uh, one or two blocks south of Canal Street. Uh, it's around the corner from the uh, proposed uh, mega jail, which I've been active in uh, trying to oppose. Uh, I live around the corner from 250 Water Street, which I'm very concerned about as well. Um, I've lived in uh, Manha in New York City all my life, born in Brooklyn. Uh, I lived for a while in uh, Battery Park City in the 1980s. I uh, came back to uh, Lower Manhattan in uh, 2010, and I've lived in Fidei since then, and I'm very uh, excited and appreciative and uh, uh, honored to be a member of the uh, community board one. Thank you. Welcome. Nice to have you all with us. Um, please note Desi uh, Robinson was with us earlier. Don't know where she disappeared to, but that's okay. Um, and Kanisha Mahajan is one of our, our new high school representative. So hopefully you'll see them um, as we go forward. With that, it's 819. We're going to continue forward on our agenda. And when Borough President Levine comes, we will certainly recognize him. Jeff Galloway. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let me just go over a little bit uh, how the elections work. We, I know we have some new members, but uh, even those of us who are longtime members, it only happens every two years, so people forget. Um, so our elections are held. 
uh, in even numbered years for two year terms. The positions are chair, vice chair, secretary, assistant secretary, and treasurer. Uh, and each candidate can submit a written statement of their qualifications, and that will be distributed uh, to the board as well as put on the website. Um, if there are two or more candidates for uh, for an office, uh, then uh, the bylaws permit a separate meeting to be held where the candidates uh, can um, answer questions, give presentations, and answer questions from members. This separate meeting is. Uh, would not have mandatory attendance. I think in past years, we may have held it immediately before the meeting in which the elections uh, take place. The elections take place at our June regular meeting. So right now we have some nominations and I will read them out. Uh, in fact, you can see them there on the slide. So we have uh, Tammy Meltzer for chair, Alice Blank for vice chair, Mimi Flynn for secretary, Mariama James and Bernard Lynn for treasurer. As of right now, that's the only position uh, that has more than one um, uh, nomination. And we have no nominations for assistant secretary. We can accept nominations from the board uh, tonight for any of these positions. And if we still have an open position with no nominations by the June meeting, we can accept nominations from the floor uh, at the June meeting uh, as well. So what I'd like to do now is ask, are there any nominations? You can nominate yourself. You can nominate another member. Are there any nominations for uh, any of these positions? Uh, raise your hands. I see Mark Amoruso has a hand uh, raised. So yeah, Jeff. Uh... As you remember, I was an assistant secretary for six, almost eight years prior previously. Um, since it's open and no one wants it, I wouldn't mind uh, helping out Mimi when she needs help. Okay, so now we have now we have a nomination uh, for assistant sec secretary. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Do we have any other nominations for any of the positions? Seeing no hands being raised and hearing no volunteers, I will declare the nominations closed. I guess that's up to Tammy to declare them closed, but I would recommend to Tammy to de declare them closed. You're on mute, Tammy. Mark, uh, the only thing I will warn you is that um, the assistant secretary position has changed since you were in that role, and it is actually a fully active position that is shared due to the combination of hybrid um, meetings. So it is not a help out when needed. It is a help out at every full board meeting. So it is not a, um, it's a very different role than it used to be. So we're delighted to have you on board, but I need to give you that full information so you know what you're stepping into. Full disclosure <laughs> here, as we've observed with what Mimi has been doing for the last uh, year or so. Exactly. So, um, it, just know what you're stepping into. That's it. All righty. Uh, and with that, let's move on to on our agenda. Thank you, Jeff, very much. Well, and I believe, Mr. Mark, you have to have your camera on, please. By the new rules, and it doesn't is your work. It doesn't work. We look well. Uh, licensing. Are you are you doing licensing for Susan tonight? Yeah, Susan. Uh, uh, Susan is, is excused. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, she didn't chair the meeting, the committee meeting, and uh, Francis and I did. Francis uh, chaired most of it, but she is. Uh, not here as well. Um, all right, so the 1st issue, which, uh, I briefly touched upon with uh, Senator Kavanaugh, uh, we need to reconcile this. Uh, this agenda item was agended, um, incorrectly. It didn't state the address. So, uh, so. Any community members that that would have seen it. Uh, might not have known what was going to be happening, uh, as well as 
a little bit us who were caught blindsided a little bit by this. Um, so this is a 123 Greenwich Street, and you'll see uh, the resolution in the packet and how uh, we voted and for some of the reasons why. Um, Mark, uh, you have two hands up already. I'm not surprised. So um, I need to finish making the presentation. Yeah. Um, so um, this was the space that was um, uh, what was that 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 big corporation, uh, Live Nation, uh, had had wanted recently. So there's a lot of history here, with regards to this. Um, we thought, and as it says in the resolution, uh, we have not gotten enough information to make the decision yet uh, on where to uh, have the entrance. Well, there's no traffic study that we've seen. Uh, Trinity Church wasn't there to be questioned. Um, some of the elected officials uh, or, or reps were not there. Um, it's about an hour, almost an hour and a half discussion on this. And uh, the committee strongly felt that uh, this should be taken on time simultaneously. There's really no emergency here, uh, which we, we didn't understand. Uh, Susan and Francis and I didn't understand that. Uh, it just came up in the executive committee. Uh, we really weren't like given a heads up about that. It just, I just happened to glance at the executive committee uh, agenda and then sort on there and was perplexed why it would be there once we voted on a resolution in committee uh, seven to two to oppose the uh, granting of the 200 foot waiver at this time. Uh, we want to revisit it uh, simultaneously when they apply for their liquor license. Uh, that's the proper way to do it. There's process issues here, and I know it's boring uh, that, you ha that we have to um, go through this, but I mean, if this is an emergency, then anything's an emergency. The, the emergency is self created by the applicant. Um, uh, on their timeline, uh, just because the legislative sessions end, uh, we felt that we should not be rushed into making a decision with absolutely not enough information to base uh, base it on. Um, so that was that was that was basically uh, it. That uh, we didn't feel that we should be Let's under this pressure to do that. Hands up. Let's uh, go to the two hands up, Mark. I understand. So can I please finish my presentation, Madam Chair? Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Um, I did say it wasn't on the uh, agenda on the agenda correctly, so so uh, so people in the uh, public would not have known about it. Uh, what we're actually discussing, um, we may may well uh, agree that Trinity Place uh, should be the main entrance, but it should not be done uh, in this process or this fashion, or be pressured to do it. By by anybody, uh, process matters. Of course, if it doesn't matter, um, uh, then what are we doing here? We take uh, things. Okay, so I've got uh, Patrick. I've got Lucian. I think your hand is up. Patrick Cannell, Pat Moore, and then um, yeah, go. So, Tammy, just a board of information. Um, it was stated at the committee meeting by myself and by the the, the party that was requesting uh, the change in state law that um, this is the 200 foot rule item. Um, the committee voted for them to come back with their liquor license application and this request at the same time. That is legally impossible um, with the 200 foot rule in place. They cannot file a 30 day notice. Um, so th I think that the board should understand that as well. Thank you, Lucian. Anything else? No, I'm, I, you can move on. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, I just wanted to address the parliamentary uh, or process point. Um, Mark correctly um, observes that process matters. I agree completely. Obviously, um, I, I I went back and listened to the YouTube recording of the licensing committee meeting to understand what was going on there. Um, even though I'd heard about it in the executive committee meeting uh, first, 
and I, I understood that there was some information missing at the licensing committee meeting, and I think Mark alluded to that as well, um, things that the, the licensing committee wanted to hear about. It seemed to me that um, that was the information that was changed or that was brought to the executive committee, and that's why it was calendared for the executive committee. And I think the urgency, Mark, out of, uh, 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 was out of the fact that the, the legislature um, is closing its session on June 2nd. Um, so I think that's why it did get calendared for the executive committee. But uh, the correct point is that there are two more or less competing resolutions here. And, and I think that um, it would make a lot of sense for one of those resolutions to someone to move to withdraw one of those resolutions and for the board to work on um, if it means amending one of them, however we need to do it. I, I, it, I hear consensus anyway, and I heard consensus from the licensing committee meeting that um, while there's not enough information, everyone understands the, the very real concern about moving uh, the entrance off of Greenwich and, and onto Trinity Place. Um, and to the point that Lucian just made about the 200 foot rule and the way that you can't really get a licensing application until you get that piece of it moved again i'm not weighing in one way or another on how that resolution i'm not so sure look. about that um and uh well, the, the thing hang is, on, Mark. is let that, me just finish well, go let ahead me just finish yeah. i i just want to say like it, i'm not weighing in on that one way or another i i think it would make a uh, prudent sense for our board and given that we're at 8 30 already um that uh we really focus on one um uh, resolution and then we try to uh, hone that thing how it is that the board wants it so the fact that there are competing resolutions out there i think isn't something that um, would probably happen again i think that was sort of a bit of confusion um, but uh, with that we can we can probably work on res one resolution and, and voted up or down that way well well uh let me address a couple things you said uh, I know what was said. Uh, the applicant can come back uh, uh, and also request uh, Trinity Street. They just, in their application, it would be Greenwich Street, and then where you can approve it at that time if that's the case. Uh, we haven't vetted it properly. And in addition to that, there's traffic study. Did you see a traffic study at Executive Committee? No. I, well, that there I you go. That I mean, that's a major, major flaw in this in this uh, in this uh, request. Uh, oh. And this happened a um, uh, number of years ago, where we had uh, two diff two dueling resolutions, and we didn't uh, reconcile it by by uh, just have someone blurt out uh, uh, table this one, table that one. We put them up side by side, and and uh, and took. Um, and took a, a vote on uh, do you yes or no on the uh, on the therefore be it resolved, and then uh, took the parts that we thought should be from each resolution and combined them. But the crux of it is uh, is uh, whether we should grant that now. Like I said, the emergency is is self created. It's just because the legislature says an end. Let everybody go. You're, uh, uh, let's, uh, I'm addressing man. their questions, Tammy. I don't know what else you want me to do. Oh, I'm trying to address what they're at, what they're let's asking. Let, let's let everyone go mm -hmm. by one by one, um, because our council member, our borough president, is also on the line. So, um, right. Pat Moore, Jeff Galloway, and then Francis Curtis. And Francis, whenever you vote, you need to vote um, live. Okay. First of all, we don't have a process for this particular action, and we do need to come up with some way of doing this if this comes up in the future. That's number one. Number two, I'm the only member on the board who lives in this immediate area, and we had we don't need a traffic study. I can tell you, besides the fact that we had a rezo when Life Nation was applying to be the entity in the no longer active American Stock Exchange building, and I made it quite clear how difficult it would be to have all the entrance on Greenwich Street because of all the traffic. Uh, Greenwich South is a very tiny little area. My street, Cedar Street, is the only street that goes west. It means that all of the cars that were going to leave people off in front of the front door, if it were on Greenwich Street, would have to go down Cedar Street and make a left turn on Greenwich Street. 
Um, it's two different things that the applicant is asking for. They're asking for the change of the front entrance. As far as I know at the moment, Trinity has had no Trinity has said yes, they don't have a problem with it. The schools don't have a problem with it. Uh, we also in the executive committee meeting uh, gave another uh, restaurant the right to have their front entrance on Trinity and the applicant will come back to the licensing committee and discuss what the entity is going to be, what, you know, whether it's going to be an eatery, what's going to go in there. And at that time, they will request a liquor license. They are not asking for a liquor license. They are asking for the entrance to be changed. You heard three um, felt my residents from my building speak in the public session today asking that the entrance be changed to Trinity. I would hope that my fellow board members will agree with me and change the entrance to Trinity. And oh. I would like to table this reso from the licensing committee and take up the reso from the. I would ask that that I asked okay. earlier that this be dis discussed and vetted out and not to have just throw it up the table. Well, I just asked for it to be I tabled, mean, so we but, need to vote on that. I think uh, a second of table motion. Thank you. You know, Pat, I'm really, I'm, you know, you didn't let me address the questions and all the people that have issues. questions and the things that want uh, that I want to address that you said. And I have nothing else to say. I've asked to be tabled. The applicant we have to said he had, he had a traffic yeah, study that yeah, wasn't presented. It. And just because you live there Mark, doesn't mean you Mark, should be able to do this. Mark, you are the first one <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to make motions to table. This motion to table has been called. It's been seconded. We're going to do a vote. I, I think we're allowed to debate the motion to table, but only the merits of tabling, not the merits of no, non-debatable. Non-debatable. All right. Yep. Okay. Mimi, take it away. Just to give us one second to make sure the vote sheet has a column for this table motion in the right Thank spot. You. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Ready to go? Yeah, maybe you can go ahead now. All righty. <clears throat> hey, Marissa. No to table. I'm sorry, this has to be a roll call for this. You can't do the hand raising. I no. mean, point, okay. of, point of order is uh, I'm asking, requesting a roll call. Okay. Blank. Um, yes, blank. Yes to the tabling. Thank you. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy, yes. Yes. Cameron? Yes. Thank you. Casal? Yes. Thank you. Colley? Helena Colley? All right. Get back to you. Chang? Yes, to Hel table. Thank Helena you. Colley is no longer on the board. She should come off. She oh. The district. I apologize. That happened recently. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Chapman? Wendy Chapman. Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Coleman. Yes. Thank you. Corman. Corman votes yes. Thank you. Kucha. Kucha votes yes. Justine. You didn't hear, you didn't hear me. I voted yes. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes. I'm just going to turn my volume up real quick. Thanks. Um, Curtis. Curtis folks. Yes. I'm hoping my video is coming through. I, um, hear me? Right so. I can hear you. Yes. I got your, I got your vote. Curtis. Thank you. Airman. Airman votes. Yes. Thank you. Flores. Flores votes. Yes. Thank you. Flynn, yes. Forsberg? Forsberg votes yes. And Madam Chair, I believe I need the request to turn my 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 video off if I'm gonna leave the meeting for five minutes. Yes. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. I'm doing Put my video on. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman. Froman, yes. 
Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, yes. Thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? James, yes. Thank you. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Thank you. Ju? Ju, yes. Thank you. K? Kay. K, yes. K, yes. Thank you. Canel? Canel, no. Canel, no. Thank you. Kettering? Kettering, yes. Thank you. Capel? Capel, yes. Thank you. Lerner? Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson? Oh, by the way, this is Chapman. I vote yes. I was just having trouble with the mute. Oh, one second. Hold on a sec. Let me. Sorry All about right. that. Chapman, Got you. Yes. No, no worries. And uh, Lewinson? Yeah, Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Lynn? Thank you. Lyon? Yes. Thank you. Mahoney? Mahoney, yes. Thank you. Meltzer? Meltzer, yes. Thank you. Minsley? Minsley, yes. Thank you. Moore? Moore, yes. Thank you. Schneck? Schneck vote, yes. Thank you. Star? Yes. Thank you. Jimmy Sung? Uh, Jimmy Sung? Come back to you. Vera Sung? Vera, yes. Thank Thanks. you. You? You votes no. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Zalter? Andrew Zalter. Zalter. Zalter votes yes. All right. Thank you. And Jimmy Sung. Okay. We are at 30. Mimi, Mimi, this is Bob Townley. You didn't call my name. Oh, I didn't know you were here. Yeah, I was having video problems. Okay, one second. Let me um, make sure that you are counted as present. And then, um, uh, what is your vote, please? Uh, yes, Townley votes yes. All right, thank you. It's 40 to 3. Thank you. With the motion to table passing, we're going to recognize uh, Mark Amoruso. I hope you don't mind. We're going to defer the floor back to the borough president who has joined us uh, momentarily for his. Not, not at all, Mr. Borough President. Thank you. Welcome, Borough President Mark Levine. Lucian, let's move our esteemed borough president in. I had moved him in before. Let's see. Let me pop back out into attendees. Let's fix that. Mm -hmm. I don't see him on now. Wiley Coyote. Okay, let me check in with him on the phone and see if uh, we get him back. Why don't you go to the next agenda item? Thank you and Mark. Thanks for your flexibility on that with the borough president. He'll be back. No problem at all. Keep going. Uh, so the next 2 items, um. Mariama, uh, gave the reports on them. So let to for to her and then I'll go back to the, uh. To the, uh, applicant, uh, the, uh, the liquor license applications. Mariam is here. I am here. All right. I don't Thank have my full report in front of me, but basically what I explained uh, at the licensing committee meeting was that this first cannabis forum was really more pointed at applicants or potential applicants and at the state's intent to fulfill its mandate in seeking out uh, people of color, women to first apply for these, the first 150 um, licenses that they give out. It was not much about the community. Um, however, I myself did raise a question from me, not from the audience that you know or any of the questions that we had collected. Um, but I asked 
on behalf of community boards and you know average Joes with no you know particular education or anything about this, um, would we get some sort some sort of education in terms of knowing what to look for um, and maybe also some um, bias unconscious bias training um, as it relates to cannabis and some of the the stigma that can be attached to cannabis or to the people who use it, um, which they thought, you know, the borough president and um, the councilwoman that was on the panel with us, Carlina Rivera, all, both thought was a wonderful idea and said they would implement. So um, in the future or the, probably the next forum will be more pointed at neighborhoods and, and um, community members and quality of life issues. Did we lose you, Mariama? You still there? I'm here. Okay, good. Um, I'll, Mark, you okay to take questions on this? I only see one hand up, and that's Bruce's. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. Anyone can ask a question. Whoever wants to ask a question. Thanks. Th this is a point of order. I'm just asking the chair if anyone at any time asks for a roll call vote on any resolution, it automatically becomes a roll call vote as a point of order. Can we discuss this at another time, Bruce, and move on? Because we've moved on to the next topic, and I will let the parliamentarian answer that. Thank um, you. But let's keep going. It's never uh, been denied before. So. Okay. Uh, I've been here 21 years ago, Mark, and that's not true, but I will okay. let the parliamentarian not, answer. Hey, no arguing. It let's is true. On. Okay, so right. let's let's move on. Any I questions on cannabis? I see no other hands, Mary. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your representation and thank you for um, being out front for us. Um, thank you. Okay. Uh, feedback for Hyde Lounge. Mary Ammon, did you do the report on that one? Um, the, which, which lounge? Hyde Lounge? Yeah. There. So there. I didn't. What happened was um, a group um, jo joined, accompanied by their lawyer from the Artisan Hotel came in to give a preliminary presentation to the presentation that they plan on giving in June at the licensing meeting, would they be seeking the license? So it was sort of like trying to forewarn us that they'd be back after um, two prior attempts, uh, as one of the members of the public mentioned earlier, to get a license um, previously awesome. and we had declined. So this is the this is the hotel on John Street where there had been like a couple of shootouts and things, um, different problems in the area caused by the by the this hotel or at this hotel, and so that was why the community had declined um, their support, and then the board therefore declined the license for this hotel. Um, Brian Nelson had been at Quality of Life this month and spoke about the hotel, but they've had no uh, problems since. And, you know, not that, you know, he wasn't necessarily vouching for them or not vouching for them, but he just said there's been no, like, criminal activity out of that hotel since. And so um, I think they're just hoping that we'll reconsider them. And they had an event. Uh, it was this past um, Monday, I believe, where supposedly they invited members of the community and the board on a tour and for like drinks and snacks uh, in the hotel so that we could see that they've become a, a much um, better place and we could check out their reviews and stuff. I did not attend, however. Mark, let's keep going then. You've got okay. Governor's Island resolutions. Do you want to take any of these together? Well, or uh, I, 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 I'll surprise you. Uh, well, first, does anyone have any questions on any of the resolutions uh, that are remaining? So what we usually do is discuss first which ones you're going to bundle. Well, I think I can bundle all of them. That's why I'm asking. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you for because Mimi needs to be prepped for that. Right. And now, yes, you do have questions. You have Alice Blank is first, Gerald okay. is second, and Patrick Canell is third. Go ahead. 
Somehow I was never made aware of the fact that there were two Governor's Island applications, and I apologize, otherwise I would have shown up, but um, always helpful to send those to me as well. Um, right. Anyway, um, I don't, I would very curious about um, the one, both of them, frankly, I don't know where they are on the island, and I'm just curious, you're talking about a 25,000 square foot space that will seat 590 people with 22 speakers until midnight. I, you know, I think it's it's kind of interesting, and I just curious where that is. Yeah, uh, we. It says one twenty five uh, Carter Road. I, I, oh, go ahead. Is, Sorry. You know the building. Yeah, that came up. Um, but as you know, the music and sound travels differently over the water, and uh, there were a lot of concerns that people that lived in uh, for people that lived down south and in, in there in Battery Park uh, that they could hear it, and they said they have heard. I know Joel. Well, I'm not, I'm not even, it. I'm yeah. just curious where it is on the island. Is it in the historic district? Um, I'm sorry, maybe um, Patrick, you might know. You have to um, defer to someone who's a little more familiar to that to give you an exact pinpoint location. Does anyone else know? Um, One of the yeah, places I don't know we said that they were, the, the smaller place said that they were going to be way out of the way. Um, and not bothering anything. The large, I'm not sure about the other place though, but the smaller I, venues. I right. did an Apple Maps. Bothering anybody. Yeah. I did an Apple Maps thing and it looks like the 125 Carter Road is pretty close to where the ferry lands. Yeah, that's how I remember it. Yeah, they said they were close to the ferry, that one. Yes. Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the island from the school. Right. Oh, I, yeah, I'm uh, okay. Well, that's a, that's a that's a very big space with a lot of seating and um you know I'm just curious about it. Okay. Um, Do you have any amendments you want to make? No, thank okay. you. Just okay. curious. Thanks. Okay, who's next? Patrick, I'll just go quick. Yeah, I'll just go quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, just disclosing my position with the short trust uh, board of the trust for Governor's Island, and then I'll be recusing on these. Thank you. Anyone else? Yep, you've got two others with hands up. You've got Gerald Forsberg and then Eric Yu. Okay, thank you. I have um, just a quick question regarding Hyde Lounge. It's not my neighborhood, necessarily my immediate neighborhood, and it's also not, um, I have no affiliation or anything, but um, Miriam, I think had mentioned that there, there was an invite um, I, did anybody from, and she wasn't able to go, but did anybody from the community board go? And was that reported back in, in terms of what, what was uh, reviewed there? Mariama, did you go to that? As a matter of fact, it wasn't Monday. It was last Thursday. It clashed with the executive committee meeting. That was the problem. Um, and so there probably weren't any board members there, actually. And But the gentleman from the community said that they didn't, weren't notified. I specifically asked at the licensing meeting, would they be posting it? And could they send the information to Lucian so he could send it out so that the community was aware that this was going on? And I, he said, the guy that spoke from the community earlier said that they lived next door and he was from the board of the building and they had no idea um, that any of this was happening. They just found out today. So it sounds like they didn't do the due diligence they promised to do, but they yeah, went okay. back to licensing in June and being oh, there in June to ask for the actual license. Right. Okay. Right. Great. Thank. You. Thanks. Yeah. I just I want to support local businesses as much as I can. We need them. That's all. But thank you so much. Okay. Um, I think Eric, you is the last hand up for you, Mark. Great. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Um, in the resolutions, there's a common statement on no outside security. What? Why is outside security undesirable? Uh, which one are you specifically referring to? Okay, for example, the, the one at 100 Greenwich Street. Okay, let me look, I, let me look. Yeah, it's 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 fairly common. I I I would think having security personnel outside can only benefit, um, in case there are rowdy. Which whereas are you looking at? Um, there will be no outside promoters or security personnel. Um. I think those probably, you know, that's a good catch there. 
Uh, the issue with the promoters is people outside perhaps cause, uh, queuing lines, maybe having uh, amplified noise or, or megaphones or this kind of thing to try and uh, promote some kind of party or something like this. Um, security, uh, they, they, they probably shouldn't be lumped together, honestly, now that you mention it. That would be my uh, my take on that. Um, Mark, I think that we... Yeah. The, what What's the crux this of this? One? So. This there is a little were new. Over actually. 75 people. So technically it was a large venue. Right. Um, and so that was why it came up as to whether or not they would have security because that oh, is one of right. our um, yeah. stipulations. Yeah, okay. When there's a large venue, we require, we require security um, right. outside. But since it's on the island, the mm -hmm. island has its own mechanisms for protecting right. the visitors. So that's why we just made a note that there would not be any additional security hired by the venue themselves. So you don't want them to hire. That was the thing, right? Right. Right. As opposed to um, someplace that's that's uh, inland. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's like this one, Hundred Granite Street. That's that's inland, right? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe uh, it should say, "How do you feel, uh, committee? Uh, no outside promoters or 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 um, separated and have security personnel if needed." Does that help you? Does that help to uh, clarify it for you? Um, for me, uh, yes. Since uh, you brought it up, I'm just thinking having security is always a good. If you're having a venue, and and especially if there's going to be alcohol, it it, mm -hmm. it there's a benefit to having people, uh, security personnel to keep some order in case things are taken outside. Uh, well, so if you're okay yeah. with just then just adding a, or security person, a, uh, no outside promoter or security personnel, if needed or something like that, or to that effect, you okay? Is that okay with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine. With All that. right, so we'll make those modifications where those whereases are. Anyone object to that? No. Okay. Well, question: If needed right. or unless needed. I'm not quite that's sure. better. Yeah, unless sounds better. Right? Okay, sorry. Yeah, that's better. That's good. Yeah. Uh Jeff Galloway, you're next. And then um Jeff. Uh yeah. Uh it, purely technical point uh on the uh, Carter Road uh, resolution. Uh it, Carter is misspelled. <laughs> we will fix that. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, maybe that's why I couldn't find it. And by the way, I have to recuse on that. Excuse me for jumping in. Thank you, Jeff. As a member. All right, um, Mark, I'd like to suggest we call the question. Okay. So there was only, there was one uh, resolution, uh, 28 West Street. I just want to bring one. It was one issue that came to your attention. Uh, it's a very innocuous place. They, uh, it's like a clay, clay, they have a clay, uh, they make clay, um, like, um, what do they call it? You use clay to make pots and things like that. Beer and wine license. The only thing was the location is directly below Canal Street. Uh, so it's on West Street where you make the immediate right onto Canal Street to go into the Holland Tunnel. So I had a concern about parking issues that were not, uh, I thought, adequately addressed. Uh, but most of the committee voted for it. So I, so we did mention in the resolution, um, uh, you know, drop-offs and pickups at that location is, um, if there's double parking, is going to be a big issue, I thought. Uh, but, um, that was it. If anyone has any questions on that, that's why I voted against it. So, all right. Um, Pat Moore is her hand up, but then Mark, I'm trying to call the question. So, yeah, I mean, you can take them all together. Just to be a little clearer. They said that they were a, they gave classes. They were small classes right. and you, yeah. ha you could have beer and wine while you were taking the class. Right. Exactly. They had loading zone and most of their students, they had already spoken to, they would not be driving that they did have a loading zone that would accommodate two cars so that the cars would not be in the way. And, and that's that only two cars, cars though. Uh, and they things. couldn't guarantee that. It's impossible to guarantee that, but. All right, uh, anyone wanna call the question? Call the question. Okay. Second. Second. All right, All right. Uh, Mark, we're gonna do this one just by regular affirmation. Sounds good. Normally would. Perfect, yep. There are two recusals, Mimi, for Governor's Island, as you heard, which are both Patrick and Alice. And other than that, Mimi, take it away, please.
I was getting the recusals done. Um, just a second, I need to find my personal. Okay, there we go. And I need total clarity on which ones we are voting on. All of them. All, oh, all cool. Them. Yeah. <laughs> Not to sound too excited. Yeah. <laughs> all right. How does everybody feel about all of them? Any opposed? I'm just opposed to 28 West Street. 28 Amoruso. Two, uh, okay. Excuse me, 228 West Street. Pardon me. 228 West Street. Thank you. Uh, how do we vote on all of them? And it's, it's a little confusing as to how to do this. If we're taking them all together or if we're voting on them individually. We're taking them all clear. together, Richard. So what you would say, if you have a, an abstention or recusal, or a no for any of them, you unmute and you say Corman votes no on whatever specific one or abstains from a specific one. Otherwise, we take them all together as one lump vote. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything that you would like to add? Based yeah, on I, I want to abstain on the Carter Road. Thank you. Road, Corman. Thank you. Any other oppositions or abstentions or recusals? All right, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Um, thank you. And moving ahead, we go to executive. Okay. So we had a presentation, Jason, do you want to talk about 107 South Street? Hello, can you hear me? We can, thank you, Jason. So 107 South Street was a modification to a proposal that we approved of back in 2020. Um, the reason that they had to come back is because in 2020, the project was proposed as a commercial building entirely and now they're going to move forward with the building as a mixed use residential and commercial building so therefore they had to make some changes um, to the rear add a fire escape um, add a door to the storefront um, to allow for egress and uh, we approved of that in the executive meeting unanimously voted to uh, suggest that the Landmarks Commission approve the modifications to the, um, you know, certificate of uh, appropriateness. Okay, let's call the question. Second. Mimi, take it away. Sorry, still catching up. <clears throat> this is for the modification of that existing building. Mm -hmm. 107 South Street. Got it. Alrighty. Any opposed? Any abstain? Abstentions? Meltzer abstains. All right. Any recusals? All right, thank you so much. All right, uh, this is the member allowances for hybrid meetings for the open meeting laws. I'm actually gonna bundle the that one with the bylaw revision for remote meetings and to require the public hearing and allow roll call on adoption of the minutes. They are all three together. I'd like to take those three together do I have anybody who has any questions? Jeff Galloway, you're up. Uh, yeah, I think there's a typo in one of them. Uh, the one uh, for uh, changing when the first roll call vote uh, is made. Um, let me pull out my notes here. Um, yeah. the, the resolution correctly says you're that you wanted to remove the words, the first resolution after, but then when the uh, language goes on to read what it's supposed to look like, you leave a few words out. And so what it should read like okay. is a roll call vote shall be taken uh, on the approval of the minutes and on the last resolution of the meeting. And it's the 
the approval of words Perfect. don't appear. You are 100% correct, and thank you for catching that. Okay. With that change in mind, do I have any other questions, or can I take those three together? I see no hands up, so Mimi, take it away. <clears throat> uh, any opposed? Anyone opposed? Yes, uh, er Eric, you opposes. Which one, Eric? Um, yeah. The the one that that allows uh, board members to vote on uh, from home for for the election. So that is okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. And um, I'm just going to make sure that I. Bob Schneck also would like to oppose the same the same uh, principles. So the ones that you are opposing is the open meeting laws one, the yes. legislation, the budget one. The that new laws, is, yeah. That one which allows people to participate remotely. Yeah, I, I don't agree with how that's done. Thank you. That was my only point of clarification for both you and Eric. All Thank right. you, keep going, Mimi. That one is under the remote hybrid meetings or under the open meeting law. Laws. It's the open meeting law, the first one. Hmm. All right, open meeting. Tammy, yep. once we're done with this vote, uh, our borough president has joined us. Okay, fun okay. time. All right, Thank is, you. Does anybody abstain for many of these? And um, any recusals? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mark Levine. Our esteemed borough president, welcome. You're a very busy man tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, just been a long night of uh, meetings hopping around the borough, uh, but really great to be here at CB1. I, I, I have to open uh, by remarking uh, just how horrified I am by the events in Texas. Just as this uh, community board meetings have been running tonight, the death toll has increased. It's now up to 18 children murdered and one teacher in the mass shooting at this school in Texas. It's, it's, um, it's just, I'm physically sick by it. It's kind of hard to think about anything else, but, uh, and, and, and of course this, this is, uh, a week in which we, we lost a fellow New Yorker, Daniel Enriquez, who was, uh, fatally shot, um, and the canal street station, um, not so far, uh, not to mention the horrific mass murder in Buffalo. Uh, we have an epidemic. Of gun violence, and uh, I don't know what more it's going to take, but this needs to be the moment where finally we get action, where we break the resistance to sensible gun reform and start protecting children and schools and people everywhere. Uh, I'm going to be fighting with all of my energy and all my power to help achieve that, and I know CB1, you agree with it. Oh boy. On on a more um, much more positive uh, topic, I'm I'm really thrilled to welcome all the new board members here and CB1. Um, we had an incredibly competitive uh, board application process this year. We had 900 applicants. That's uh, close to an all-time record uh, around the borough for only 300 spots. So we really selected just an amazing group of leaders. Um, I do want to take a moment to thank some of the Longtime board members who are, are no longer continuing, um, just to thank them for their years of service. And of course, they're going to continue to be active in the community, which I really look forward to. But thank you to Michael Francor, Elizabeth Lemire, Jeffrey Mahawk, Judith Weinstock, and Michelle Arroyo for their years of service. And welcome to the great new board members we have here tonight Cody Lyon, Kanisha Mahajan, Desares, um, Christina. Excuse me, Desares, Christina Robinson, Andrea Jew, and Morton Mensley. Um, I've gotten to know most of the new members. Um, they're really phenomenal. Uh, they're going to enrich CB1. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are engaged in a, a rigorous onboarding process that um, we we're pioneering this year for uh, returning board members and, and new folks who are serving for the first time. Uh, we really want to support you to give you 
all the tools that you need to succeed. We had our first onboarding session yesterday. We've got several more coming. We're really excited about it. Um, I know how deeply engaged you are in the challenges of the open meeting law. Um, the emergency order is set to expire uh, currently on June 14th. And um, the uh, new law that comes into effect, uh, well, better than if we had completely reverted to pre-pandemic, all in-person rules, uh, does still present some challenges. Um, the hybrid meeting structure, um, first of all, um, will require quorum to be met by members in person, uh, which uh, leaves you with some complicated decisions about policies around excused absences. Um, it also leads us, leaves us with some difficult questions about COVID protection protocols, et cetera, for in-person. So we have been regularly uh, working to uh, secure legal guidance and to disseminate it to you and all the boards um, on how to navigate this. We also understand that this is a resource question. Um, honestly, CB1 has probably some of the best uh, uh, technology capabilities of, of any board in the city. Shout out to Lucian for uh, his work and leadership on that. Um, but we understand that it's not easy to run a hybrid meeting well. It requires specialized cameras, specialized microphone, um, the right software and, and training and staff capacity. So we really want to support you in this. Um, some of what we'll be doing is disseminating um, your expertise to other boards, but um, we're taking this very seriously um, and, and will continue to. Um, I, I, I wish I didn't have to mention um, COVID again to you, but alas, uh, I do. Uh, while we have made enormous progress in this pandemic, we are in the midst of another wave, incredibly the fifth wave in New York City, a wave of very contagious variants. And while um, we have new tools, we didn't have uh, widespread testing, um, good supply of antiviral medications. Um, we're still seeing a very uh, steady increase in cases and hospitalizations. And so we do need people to still take this seriously um, by um, First, uh, getting their booster shots. We're way behind. Um, I believe uh, uh, here in CV1, the booster rate is um, still in the 40% range or, or low to mid 40s. Uh, we need to do much better. Uh, we need people to mask in public indoor settings. We need people to get tested regularly and to seek uh, a talk to a doctor for treatment if they do test positive, et cetera. So um, I ask you as leaders in the community downtown to um, please speak up on this. Use your voice um, to help people remain alert and stay safe. Um, so I believe there was a question earlier in the e evening about um, the, the jail. Uh, is that right? Uh, Madam Chair, could you clarify that? Um, uh, I've seen Justine nodding, so I'm going to take that as yeah, a yes. I'm sorry. Um, it, it's a definite yes. We've had a lot of presentations. Obviously, you know the position of community board one, and you also, I think, would have heard today um, the artist's daughter who was simply bereft and beside themselves about the loss of their art and the inability of the city to, um, she likened her art being locked up at Rikers, so. That gives you an idea of where oh, they've been goodness. destroyed or locked up. My goodness. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think that um, I'm not sure who asked about it, but I, I'd spoken about this at the New York Law Breakfast uh, a week or so ago. And um, I, I think there were other alternatives, including a, um, a full redevelopment of the existing structures uh, that um, potentially would have ended up with the same number of beds. Uh, but would have been less disruptive uh, to the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, I don't, I feel that that never got, um, has not yet gotten an adequate airing uh, and vetting. Um, and um, I'm going to give a shout out to, I don't know if he's on now, but um, my friend and your great council member, Chris Marte, who uh, is the one who really um, first brought that uh, alternative plan to my attention. Um, I'm continuing. Um, to push for that to be considered, I realize it's late in the game, but uh, we're, you know, of course, we're up against a uh, construction timeline set by the prior mayor's office that they're looking to knock things down as quick as possible. 
I mean, they've already started putting up fences and cutting trees yeah. and everything. So as soon as yesterday um, is fantastic. I understand time is of the essence. Yes, we appreciate that. Um, and we appreciate you coming. Let's see uh, real quickly. Um, I see Alice blank has her hands up and Mariama. So we'll take a couple of questions if you have a moment and then we're going to get back to our business of the board. And again, for everybody who does have a hand up, it's one minute. Thanks, Borough President Levine. I was at that uh, law school breakfast and did write you and, and thank you so much for going public with your feelings towards the jail and your support of reviewing the alternative, something that this board has been on record now for five years. So that is really great news. And I would really hope that you can support uh, Councilman Marte and this idea of a public hearing could maybe come up at this point very, very soon. Um, is that something that you might entertain with? I'll, I will uh, talk to him about it ASAP. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice. So, hi, Mark. You've been um, amazing throughout COVID, at least in my opinion. Oh, and thank you. Thank you for saying yes, that, Yes, the whole time. And happy to see that you're, you're still at it and you're still on it. I don't understand how we, as you know, a society, a, a city, can discuss COVID and the open increasing and the open meeting laws, um, <laughs> sort of taking away yeah. the privilege, um, a right to be at home for some that some people need, um, at the, in the same in the same conversation. Um, I spoke during this public hearing that Tammy heard um, held earlier today about this very thing. We have a lot of members, with all due respect to the people that live upstate, you know, the parts of the people in the legislature that live upstate, I don't think they understand um, how greatly New York City was impacted by COVID. I don't think they understand how greatly um, Lower Manhattan was impacted by 9-11 and the fact that we're still dealing with it. And that yeah. we have a lot of people with severe comorbidities to COVID. So as, these, as COVID continues to rise, to expect people who are severely vulnerable because they have cancer or some other disease or some other disability to go out to a meeting, um, you know, where they, you know, just as a volunteer, no less, go out to a meeting and risk literally their life and maybe exposure to their family members is, it's really, really outrageous. And I think that, it, I said this earlier, that it at least walks the line, if not crosses the line, of uh, violating the ADA, violating HIPAA, violating the 14th Amendment to require people to say, I need to stay home rather than come in person because I'm ill and, and, and reveal their, their health status and then go on camera if they've just gotten home from chemo and they're in, sick in bed in their pajamas. They should not have to be recorded that way. And I, I think that if they choose not to, then that they, they lose the right to participate in the meeting then that's not giving equity and equality to people with disabilities. It's just not. Well, well, Mariama, um, I am also deeply dismayed by the lack of flexibility that um, boards are going to have to live under. Uh, ideally, you could uh, even change your format as conditions warranted. For example, if we're in the midst of a heavy COVID period, as we are now, the alert status is high. I want to remind people that you could go for an all line, all an all virtual format, and at the risk of you. Um, but the um, the quorum requirement uh, does impose uh, a burden on members uh, that um, that I think you were referring to, Mariama, and. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to navigate. And um, that's why we are hoping to get a long term solution, a, a legislative solution that um, would really allow boards uh, much more flexibility. Uh, the, the session in Albany is, is just about over, it's only a few more days of the legislative session. And so I think, um, well, you know, I guess we won't lose hope. Um, I think we have to be prepared that we're stuck with. Um, uh, the, the, the laws that were passed a few weeks ago, um, we're going to, we are pushing the law department on a number of points to achieve maximum flexibility. So we're, we're not done fighting, but, uh, I certainly share, um, 
many of the concerns that you uh, articulated so well, Mariana. Wow. Thank you. And Thank you. I, I know you'll do the best. Mariana, I'm going to cut you off because there are many hands up and it's 919. So I'm going to take a couple hands. If you are repeating what Mariana has said or Alice has said, I encourage you to put your hand back down um, and send a private note to our borough president. All righty. With that note, um, we're going to go Sarah Cassell. Hi. I have a cough and I'm coughing. I'm using my screen instead <clears throat> because of my congestion. Is this legal? To be, to be, yeah, yeah, we can see your face. The whole point of it is to be able to see yeah, you. You can, you, can, you can see the flowers. I can see you. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, sorry for a president. Uh, Morton no Mitzley, one of our new members. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. I just unmuted myself. Uh, uh, president uh, Levine, uh, minister, and I want to thank him for uh, support on the issue of the downtown. His probably already is, but the one on the Water Street right now, and the people down I die area. Important's breaking up. I hear you. I, I can't, can't hear, hear you. what he's saying. If you can, that's uh, fine. Unfortunately, I could not either. Okay, Morton, it's very hard to hear you. You need to not move a lot and just face straight to the computer, please. If you move your yeah. head up and down, then you're lost. Or put on a headset. Yeah. Um, can you hear me better now? Much better, but please be louder. Okay, guys. He, Morton, we're going to come back to you. He was talking right. about 250 Water Street. Do you know what the question was, Sammy? Um, I'm going to have him text it to okay. Lucian chat and then we'll move on. All right. Um, Wendy, I believe, is gone. Bob, Bruce. I, I haven't gone. Oh, sorry, okay. Wendy. Go. Sorry, Bob. But I thought Wendy had gone. Okay, it's cool. Uh, I'll be quick, though, I promise. Um, and thank you so much for the presentation. Great support. One of the things that I brought up with Chris Marte earlier that we are learning that the um, records in terms of, you know, the reason I bring it up is my daughter has just recently uh, developed a 9-11 related illness and I'm in the process of registering her and we have to pr provide a lot of documents. Um, and one of the pieces of that that n not my daughter, but other people will need to do is to go to the Board of Education or the city tax records or whatever it is. And right now the DOE does not have a singular point person to go to. Um, it is so, you know, and this will be something that will be need to keep for, you know, decades ahead of time. And we're asking if you could help on this front, um, just to echo the, the point that the DOE needs to assign a singular office to be a point of contact for all students that were in in school um, so that they can apply for 9-11 benefits um, in the future. Uh, and that may not be exactly your area, but I just want to know that I just want to say that's going to be a very big concern going forward. So thank you. Well, Wendy, first, I'm so sorry about your daughter. I'm very, very sorry to hear that and would love to do anything we can to support you and her and the family, including working on this issue. Um, my uh, wonderful community liaison, uh, Andrew Chang, is on. I don't know if you have chat enabled, but uh, or maybe you already have his contact info, but if possible, um, maybe he could put his info in. So, Wendy, you could reach out to us and we can help any way possible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bob, Bruce. Make sure Bob. that Wendy gets Andrew's okay. contact info. Okay. Th thank you. I think I'm, I'm having some problems with my, my, with my video, but can you hear me? You look good. You look great, Bob. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, Mr. Borough President, I just wanted to double down on thanking you for bringing up what happened today uh, in Texas and 
uh, my staff and all of us. I don't think we uh, rush through this topic and thank you for bringing that up. I'm not a very religious man, but violence is an abomination to God. And we have to start talking about violence all throughout our society. I know after Sandy, we called for gun control. And uh, I just think, and I'm not an, I, maybe I am an expert in this. I just think that mental illness uh, doesn't differentiate. And if we're tossing around bombs throughout the, throughout the world, I don't think people with mental illness differentiate between killing children. And I think we need to start talking about ending war and uh, propping up uh, war, no matter who starts it. We have to figure out solutions to violence on television throughout our society, because as I say, it's an abomination. But I wanna thank you, because I know it's heartfelt. And I wanna thank you for bringing that up. But today's a, a solemn day for, for all of us. Uh, I know the principal of PS234 just sent out an email and uh, to all of her parents trying to reassure people. And it is just complicated. And thank you. Um, thank, thank you, Bob. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I think you mentioned me Mitch, next. Mitch Froman. Oh, yes. Hi, Tammy. Uh, hi, hi, uh, Borough President. Uh, be, besides uh, supporting what Mariama said uh, a few minutes ago, 100%, and I appreciate your empathy and sympathy with that position, but I noticed you said, you know, we're, we're kind of, the quagmire is like we're stuck with the quorum, you know, like uh, uh, rules. And so what I would like to mention is that, you know, due to the fact that this is like a hundred year once in a lifetime or once in like five lifetimes, uh, a, a pen, you know, worldwide pandemic, I think this f fits under, you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face. I'm not directing that to you. I'm just directing you to the situation where maybe ex an exception has to be made to allow for certain things that might not normally be allowed in, in normal times. So I just wanted to like uh, run that by you when you go, you know, upstate. Thank you. Well, well I look, I, I agree, Mitchell. Uh, and uh, this is why uh, we, we are not thrilled with the arrangement that's being imposed on you. Uh, coming in a couple of weeks. Thank you. And we're okay. Um, need a fight to give you the flexibility. Yep. Bruce and Bob Schneck again. I uh, I have to second um, Bob's remarks. I, I so appreciate your having opened with the tr continuing tragedies of, of mass murder in this country. Um, you're the only one who did so tonight, and I really appreciate it. My question or my comment has to do with the jail. I never heard before in all of the years of discussion and seminars that I've been involved with the proposal to actually reform the tombs itself as it exists. It's an incredible solution. Uh, unfortunately, I guess the, the horse is out of the barn. Uh, the other major solution that uh, keeps uh, Propping, coming up is to rebuild and restructure the tombs, which would not only be a long, long time process, but to a lot of the communities of people of color, of which Community Board 1 is not so much, uh, that would be like suggesting a more humane facility be built on the site of Buchenwald. So yours is the first... <laughs> The first proposal that both addresses, you know, the need to close down the tombs and a viable solution that would have been so much less disruptive to our community. My question is, 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 is it out of the question? Is it, is it, is it done and over? Uh, I think it's pretty far along, but, um, I, I don't think, uh, it's done and over. No, otherwise, uh, I wouldn't be raising it and, uh, uh, I, I'm going to circle back with uh, Councilman Romarte tomorrow to uh, compare notes and get a status update and see, see uh, what we can do next. Thank you. You got it. Thank you, Bruce. And then Dr. Andrea. 
And Andrea, you have to tell me whether you prefer to be called Dr. Andrea or not. <laughs> there. Bob? Okay, I, I just wanted to say that for me, the predominant fact of this period is COVID. And um, and until I think the, that we've been operating for the last two and a half years under a set of rules where we had quorums, where we where we all voted, everything worked fine. And I don't think, I think that the most important thing to solve, as you mentioned yourself, is getting through COVID. And we have, we act as though it's gone, but it's not gone. And to have the government take actions that kind of rush the process. It's a natural process. We have to get through it. We have to have discipline as a society. All of us have to be disciplined. So passing laws that kind of go against the science is just just bad in principle and doesn't make any sense, especially since we've operated in a very sensible way that that I haven't had any trouble with. I've never heard anyone complain about. And to actually have these things come at us with the force of law is frightening to me that we should not use the the word law to to kind of allow just kind of things that are almost nonsensical. So thank you so much. I also wanted to say that really I got hit in the heart too by just every hour hearing another two kids dying. It's horrifying. And on a national level, the same kind of troubles happen. We can't get laws passed that we need and we could have very soon the Supreme Court allowing people to carry to, to carry disguised weapons on our subways. We don't need that. How what could we do to get in the way of things that don't even make sense anymore in the national kind of discourse? So thank you. Thank, thank you, Bob, for, for your passion. Thank you. Uh Andrea, welcome. She's one of our new board members. And Hi. Andrew's uh, the last the last commenter for you. Hi, um, Madam Borough President. Um, I just wanted to um, ask, how do we make this public meeting happen regarding, you know, you know, options for what's right. going to happen in Manhattan Detention Center? Because I work right across the street and as best as abatement is going on, you know, I see those trucks coming in and out. I mean, we're down to the wire. Like, people here are you know, have expressed, you know, what they feel and it's well known that the community, you know, that I'm in has expressed, you know, their complete, you know, opposition to what's going on and how it's been railroaded into, you know, our neighborhood. And there's been no, you know, really no, you know, just dialogue, you know, what's going on. How do we push, you know, how do we, you know, have a public hearing so that our voices can be really be heard instead of just, you know, drowned out and just, you know, being dismissed. Well, first of all, Andrea, welcome to the board. It's great that you stepped up and thank you for your passion and your comments. Um, I'm going to talk to Councilor Marte about this tomorrow, um, but I hear a strong demand from this board for uh, a public forum to to debate this and. Um, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to talk to him about this tomorrow and find out uh, how we can make it happen. And I just want to say thank you for speaking up and pointing out that there are other options. And yes. I think it takes a lot of courage. And I really, really thank you from the bottom of my heart from, you know, bringing this up. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Andrea. Okay, thank you, uh, Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine for joining us this evening. We know you're bouncing around the borough. Um, thank you for all your advocacy. Thank you for supporting the community boards and thank you for the process and the trainings. And as I've said many times, go to all the trainings, if not once, but twice. Amen. So, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you everyone here at CB1. What a great discussion. Have a good That's night, great. everybody. All righty. Back to where we were. Okay. <sighs> Uh, we have passed everything. We've got three more resolutions for um, for executive. Um, one is I'm going to make a motion to table 
my affordability, the S9032 relating to Battery Park City. It was um, asked for during the public session by several people who came up and spoke. So um, Justine also asked me to do that um, earlier when we were talking. So do I have a second on table for that? Um, can I address that, Tammy? Because I, although I heard those requests earlier, I, I think it boiled down to yeah, that's a question about part C, but A, B, and D are actually very good uh, for the uh, community. Oh. And, and oh. I was going to suggest a motion to amend to express our support for A, B, and D. And just to remind people what those mean, A and B would extend Scree and DRE and the comparable programs for condos to Battery Park City, where it currently does not apply. Uh, one of the few places in New York City where it doesn't apply. D would extend the ground lease by 50 years, thereby giving the authority the ability to extend building ground leases, which it, no, it currently does not have because it itself doesn't have uh, a lease uh, beyond 2069. C is the one that created most of the controversy, and it is somewhat complicated. And I, I would suggest an amendment that we favor A, B, D, indicate um, uh, that uh, C raises, that we're concerned that C may have unintended um, uh, consequences, uh, as well as um, uh, some uh, sort of uh, lack of clarity in how it would work in practice, and and therefore we don't have the ability to come to a position for or against C at this point. And so we would be asking the legislature to pass the legislations with A, B, and D and hold off on C. And Timmy, if I may? Please do. Thank you. So I, I actually agree with most of what Jeff just said. Um, I was you beat me to it, Jeff. Um, based on conversations with what the Battery Alliance folks said, what the Battery Na Neighborhood Association folks said, and I think the Homeowners Coalition as well, because our biggest concern at the Homeowners Coalition, I'm a member of that coalition, has been and was with Part C. So I'm good with. If, if that reflects everything that's said, I'm fine to take that amendment. Yes, but my, my point, though, is I might want to be a little bit stronger about um, uh, part C, asking to, you know, pull it out and saying that we'd like to have it discussed at the Battery Park City Committee meeting. I'd like it to be pulled out holistically because it, it if it costs that much that we have yes. so many other people come, then I definitely think it should be pulled out. It should be uh, and pulled also out. The legislature please. ends its session on June 2nd. So. Right. Uh, right. So, so they can make an what... amendment and pull it out and just pull out part C and then move forward with A, B and D. And our point is just to say that pull it out at, because we need further discussion and um, we need further negotiation because, I mean, and we don't have to go into the reasons in the. Um, friendly amendment accepted from perfect. both uh, Jeff and. Because I think that reflects everything that we've heard. Um, yep. I see Jess Coleman has a hand up and Sarah. Yeah, so I, on, honestly, I, I'm, I'm not quite clear. I, I know we've heard a lot of people speak out against section C, but I'm still not quite clear what the objection actually is. I, I've heard the term un, unintended consequences a few times, but may I explain? Yeah, yeah. I'd love well, it. Yeah, thank I you. think, hold on, I'm, before you go on and explain, that is part of the problem that there is. There hasn't been enough of a robust discussion. Um, what we've learned on a community board basis is if you're going to put in a program like that, you need to look at the box from all sides. It's been presented, but we didn't have the dialogue on that particular piece of where the loopholes are, what the loopholes will be. I think we learned this best when we looked at the water 250 Water Street text amendment, and it was um, marketed and sold to us as being, you know, beneficial and there were some concerns that we had, but when you look at something in hindsight, wow, where did we have problems with it? And I think that we haven't taken the time as a board to hear from a housing authority person other than our electeds who have proposed it as to what the downsides could be. And I think just that's the exact problem of why this is coming out as not being as supported is we really need to look at where the loopholes are. What is 
what could be improved in that one section to be more holistic and better for public engagement and transparency. But also, Tammy, part of what that section is asking for is saying that they are looked at that that there is going to be a means testing for folks who have uh, fall within 150 percent of the area medium income, and those people would have to pay all the bills and then pay them back, then get a rebate at the end of the year. So question issue one that we had was if the folks can't pay the bills, how are they going to pay the bills and then get a rebate at the end of the year? They'll be foreclosed on by the condo boards and thrown out by that point. But that was only a piece of it. The second piece of it is looking at the equities. And these are all things that um, need to be vetted out, right? And nothing, none of this is to suggest that we put this in a resolution right now. But things that have to be vetted is are that um, Commercial developers and commercial buildings, whether they're uh, Brookfield place or uh, gateway plaza and left rack. They get, I'm going to put it in quotes, sweetheart deals Brookfield, for example, made a deal uh, in 2019. I believe it was to have a no ground rent increases whatsoever for um, till 2042 or 2049. Um, and. Why is it that Brookfield gets no increases when the homeowners are facing catastrophic increases at different levels? And why is it that large corporations are being given breaks? Because the way the ground rent is paid right now, the co the condo buildings pay, I don't know the percentage, but in 2020, they paid $21 million when the residential rental buildings paid $3 million in ground rent. That kind of inequity needs to be examined. And I don't believe that uh, part C takes that into account. Excuse my voice cracking. So part of all those are reasons why. And so you want to sum it up the way Tammy did and Jeff did. That's great. But there's a lot of detail in there. And I also feel as if the people who live in Battery Park City and are, are directly affected need to be able to weigh in and have a say. That doesn't mean we have to. Um... Yeah, I, I just want to be clear. I actually think part C is quite good quite good in the direction but it, it does need to be flushed out and it's not clear how it would work in yeah. practice and um so I, I it's not so much that i'm against it although i recognize that others are i think it's a great first step but i don't think it's fully flushed out it's a great first step but it's got the same okay. problems that well, gateway Plaza tenants association had about means testing there's means testing in it and you guys didn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. We, we, we don't, I don't think we should be I think, I think or against right now. I'm going to, exactly. I think we're asked and answered on this. Jess, are you okay? Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Thank okay. you. Guys. So it's an amended resolution taking out part C. Then we're not tabling because it didn't get seconded. We're amending the resolution, taking out part C, putting a noting a note within this resolution saying. We approve A, B, and the last one, but nothing related to C at this time. Period. Period. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're with, that, with that. Let's call the question. C being the rebate program. C being the rebate. Yeah, exactly. What okay. to do with the ground rent? And and they are so, uh, designated that in the legislation. Yes. With parts A, B, C, and D. Right. Right. With that, let's call the question. Sec I second it. Yeah. Fantastic. Mimi. Okay, and this is just for S9032. Correct. Got it. All right. Does anyone oppose the resolution? Coleman opposes with the with the amendment. Coleman. Anybody else? Ketring abstains. Abstains. All right. Amaruso abstains. Amaruso. Brown Kennedy abstains. Anyone else? Any recusals? All right, thank you. Fantastic. Motion passes. Let's keep. All right, there are two waiver of 200, uh, the SLA 200 foot rule that have come before us that are going in front of the legislation, as Senator Kavanaugh has said. Um, you can take a look at both of them. For 123 Greenwich, pursuant to information was sent to us and discussed at executive committee for um, where the applicant was changing and what he would, what they would be using on Trinity versus on Greenwich in terms of their access, their flow, their garbage, and all of that was uh, reviewed at the time. 
That's for 123. For 111 and 115 Broadway, it is a change to an entrance on Trinity, the church that um, they need it because obviously there's a school right next door. I actually spoke to the principal of the school who said their back door leads to a bar. So they didn't care about this because it was across the street from them. Um, and if you go out literally, he said you open the door of the school in the back and the bar is right there. So they were fine. With that, um, does anybody have any questions or hands up? I see Jeff Galloway and then Mark and Marusa. Um, so um, I, I uh, asked a question at the executive committee to try to understand what these resolutions were all about. And I think I share it because I think it's relevant to our discussion. On the 123 Greenwich Street, as I understand uh, Pat Moore's comments, which I think were quite compelling, um, and it makes and as well as the public speakers, the local residents strongly prefer the entrance to any large venue being on Trinity Place rather than on Greenwich Street, and that makes a lot of common sense. There are a lot of resident. It's not only Pat's building, but there are several other residential buildings on uh, on Greenwich, uh, and if you're going to have traffic and large crowds, that can be quite disruptive. In, in a residential neighborhood. Trinity, on the other hand, is fundamentally a commercial street. I'm not sure there are any residential buildings there. There is technically the church across the courtyard, um, but it's, it's, it's much more accommodating to handling um, uh, traffic. In order for the entrance to be on Trinity Place, this legislation has to pass because in the absence of this legislation, the only choice for the owner is to put the entrance on Greenwich Street. And so oh. this, this legislation would enable the entrance to be on Trinity Place. And that was one of the reasons that I voted in favor of this resolution in the executive committee and I intend to vote in favor of it tonight. Thank you. And the one thing to note, the reason why there is this discussion at all is because the old entrance having been on Trinity was for a stock exchange had nothing to do with the liquor license. The liquor license has a 200 foot rule to a sole use for a school or a church. And as we all know, Trinity is right there. So yes, um, and Mark, you've already spoken on this once. I have not heard from Francis. I'm gonna do Francis before you, apologies. I, I just do not feel comfortable with the way this whole issue has been raised and I thought that in us um, um, tabling the motion for uh, licensing that this part would be included in that, that tabling, but obviously not. But I am not, I'm not feeling comfortable with this whole issue with anything involving uh, the, the, the door moving left or right or in, in either situation. Yes. For both, you're talking both resolutions, correct? Yes. yes. Different applications. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Justine. I'll go after Mark. After Mark. Okay. Yep. I, I can go last since you noted, I spoke already. Okay, I called you next. I am you know, going down the order. Go for it. Okay. Uh, I echo what, what Francis said. Uh, she had shared that part of the committee. Um, again, um, the process matters here. This is no emergency here. Uh, what was said earlier about that, that it's illegal for them to apply for a license is not correct. Now, any leverage we have with them, with the applicant, um, uh, with regards to stipulations and things like that, will you know, uh, clearly not you know, not be there now that they have this exemption, um, and uh, we should he should be considered in the committee deliberately and not rushed. So the way this was done, as Francis noted, uh, was not the right way to do things, regardless okay. of the merits. And everyone should have been able to opine on this before a motion to table was done. Mark, uh, it just seemed this, very selfish to me. This is the place where I'm hoping everybody does opine with the other information that was given. 
And do you have anything to ask or add about the other address that did not come before you? It's the same. It's the same issue. The same issue. We should. It should be uh, vetted and and deliberative in the uh, licensing committee, where we have the expertise on this and not rushed. And like I said, that they they, okay. they they said they had a traffic report. We never saw it. You never saw it. Mark. Uh, so, so uh, this whole process is uh, has been, uh, I think, a little bit corrupted here. And Just it shouldn't see. happen again. I mean, if it's going to happen here, I mean, what else? You know, we need to find Mark. what an emergency is. Mark, <laughs> I hear you. You've said it. You've said it once, twice, three times. I get it. Let's get everybody to have an opportunity who wants to speak to speak, mm -hmm. please. And and I can't make a motion to table now before everyone one speaks. Comment per member, and I called Justine. Justine is next. All right. So, um, my question is, I'm confused as to what the argument is about. They want this is all fighting about which door, which side, which street the door opens on. Greenwich Street. They cannot. Or? They cannot get a liquor license mm -hmm. on Trinity, which is the entrance that they want to use. And the entrance that the community wants them to use, Got it. right? Until they get the waiver that that is a legislative ruling that they need to get. The senator has introduced it. It's at the end of the session. If they don't get it now, they must wait until the next session. So that's because okay, they so. can't come before us because they would not be allowed to apply for a liquor license because it breaks the two hundred foot rule. Got Except it. to put it on Greenwich Street, which they would be free to do right now. Correct. Correct. But, but, but you're hearing board. from people who live. That's what I want to let me ask my question because this is where I'm, I'm losing yep. it. Yeah. Greenwich Street is objectionable to Pat Moore and folks that and live everyone who lives in the community in the community because of the traffic that's con of concern of the traffic of the people coming through it, because this will be a venue that will be a large venue. So you're going to have traffic. So it needs to be on Trinity place. And Mark's objection is that. We shouldn't just assume that there's going to be a traffic issue. We need to do a a, a traffic study. They did a traffic and study, but we haven't did. seen it. Got it. Okay. What and they, I say, what we, I'm sorry. Well, and you say let the community I mean, yeah, what we we have a traffic for, study. What we asked you know? for was more information. Right. Got it. We have seen a traffic study that other applicants have done, and mm -hmm. we we turned them down because it was on Greenwich. We I didn't want it. any of it on Greenwich. This is same place. This applicant sent more information. They sent what it was going to be: five restaurants open to the public on the ground level, plus their private club above. The garbage and everything, and the service entrance would be out on Greenwich, but the primary entrance would be on Trinity. The school next door had no challenges to it. They are working closely. We got a letter today from the applicant's attorney saying that they are in contact with the church. The church did say that they are in discussions and they are working through methods of operation that they will then bring back to us when they go for their liquor license. So Terry, okay. what's and not fair is that when this issue went before the licensing committee, we, we didn't have all of that information. We didn't have all of that. And we were asked to opine and, and approve something that was making us feel like we've been blindsided and it was being rushed. And I think and that's, that's what Mark the, is speaking to. Correct. Yes, and so they, yes absolutely, Francis. Yeah. Then they sent the information to have it ready for executive because again, the legislature ends June 2nd. So Got if it. we're that, going that's, to- That's the rush. The rush is the legislature. It has to be ending. within our business cycle. Right. That's why I said it's a self-created emergency. It's not it with us. It which we did the, have, they so, did so mention the church. Said, Mark, stop, happen, so. stop, which I'm answering Justine's question, which the Senator said, yes, it's in front of them. So the options that we have right now is opine or not opine. And yeah, okay, I hear it. so we, as a community board in our bylaws have a thing that if more information comes out after the committee meeting, we can take it into consideration. We can take it in an executive as long as it hasn't been voted by the full board. That is what we did to try and yes, it is not our timeline, but there's a thousand and ten things that we have done as a community board. So our voice is heard for public mm -hmm. engagement. If right. we want to think back to the jails coming to us 
and the PDC stuff in December and having to hold a public hearing because they came to us so late and told us too bad if you don't want to say anything. So yep. this, it, it is a point of whether you opine or not. And my question, I have one more question about Trinity Church. They have actually weighed in on this one way or the other? The answer, they have not, they have not come to a conclusion either way. The answer that they gave us was tell you but they've had the opportunity to wait and that's a crucial component that we don't know yeah. uh it says they are having initial conversations with the ned team so they should I mean, come back to us when I'd the like conversations to make a are over excuse me i haven't spoken yet yeah. i'd like to make a motion that this up. debate now comes to a close in the next three minutes it's now 9:56 by 10 o'clock this has to move on yes, i have my hand up in front of us and it's 10 o'clock Thank you. Second. Alice, uh, we have three minutes. I have one hand up, uh, Pat Moore, and then Mitch, a minute oh. each, and then we're done. We go to Simply, a vote. I was going to make the motion that we bring it to a close and that we vote. We've already discussed it. Again, it, it is the same information that applied to Live Nation applies to this entity. We want the, we don't need a traffic study. I'm telling you what it's going to be like. Everybody who lives in this community uh, lives around this Pat, area. Did you make? Well did you right. just call the question? Yes, call I called the question. The question. I called it to question. I second. Okay. I second. The question has been called. It's seconded. We do a vote. Mimi, take it away. So I need. I need to put my hand sorry, down. Uh, Madam Chair, could we just be clear what the vote is right now? We are voting on the SLA 200 foot rule for 123 Greenwich. And I'm going to put in there 111 and 115. We're going to do them together for in order for speed. Tam, you want me to take my hand down then? Please, uh -huh. Mitch. Yeah. You got it. All right. Does anybody oppose um, either one of these resolutions? And Maria says no on all of them. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, you is is no on the uh, this Greenwich, Greenwich Street and Trinity. Curtis is no. Wait, I have I, I have to make sure I'm following. So at committee, no was that we didn't want the door on Greenwich. We wanted to on, on Trinity rather. Correct. This but is now now it's that we don't want it on Trinity. Oh, Trinity still. No, 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 no. no. Just to, so wrong. just to, to be clear about these vote, these resolutions, the motion is to pass these resolutions. The first resolution for one, two, three Greenwich is to endorse moving to waive the two hundred foot rule so that the Trinity Street entrance could be used as the principal entrance to the establishment. And for the one eleven one fifteen Broadway resolution, it's resolution that. Uh, endorses waiving the 200 foot rule to allow uh, the principal entrances of the establishment to be on Trinity place as well. Okay, but number three was voted down at committee, correct? One, two, that was an opposite resolution. resolution, Mariama. It was a vote, it, not a vote to approve, it was a vote to deny. Right, okay. Is this a vote to deny? So now this is a, a vote to approve. This is a vote, vote to, to approve, approve and, 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 and uh, yes. yes. Okay. I did, okay. Yes. That's what I wanted to get clear on. Thank you. Mariama, what is your vote? I'm um, yes, then. On all of them. Okay. So, Curtis, uh, I just need to clarify which yeah. ones. I'll withdraw on. Approve. Yes. Oh, you're, you're a yes. So, you're. Yes. Okay. Uh, does Amaroos or you, have you changed your vote uh, with this clarified information? Absolutely not. Thank you. All right. Are there any recusals? Abstentions? Uh, Justine Kucha is going to abstain. Kucha. Both of them? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Mimi, let me change mine to abstaining from the other one. I only want to support the one that helps the Cedar Street people. I don't like this idea of everybody starting to do this. That's that was that was my concern at committee. Okay, and um, <laughs> do you mind telling me exactly? Is it 123 or 111? So that's 123, I believe. Number three, oh. I'm a yes, and number four, no. Backwards, Mariama. 123 is the one that 
yeah is she, talking she, about. she's saying yes for 123 i got it justine okay cool, cool. All right, and just then, note, for the record, all of these are exceptions. These are not the standard of how things work. These mm -hmm. are exceptional case by case basis. But they want to change the New York state law. So then everybody's going to start doing it was my concern. Is that, or well, is that incorrect? It's the, this, the law is written to only apply to the block and lot where the building is. So. <clears throat> they say, like, they outline the actual confines of the property in the state law. So it doesn't ap apply universally to all establishments, but only to these two particular establishments. Correct. Okay, so every time somebody wanted to have the 200 foot rule waived, they'd have to come before us again. Correct. And, and, I, and I recommended that um, if you want to create a process where we could then give people who approach us for this very thing, mm -hmm. uh, steps to take and an approach and things they need to provide and make sure the legislators know that, that's something that we could do. Um, but as of right now, there's no set process. And we're gonna take, and that will be taken up in licensing whenever Mark and Megan and Susan decide to do that. Okay? Okay. Awesome. Just, just to be absolutely clear, Mariana, which one are you abstaining from? 111 and 115 Broadway. That's what I'm Thank you. But that is Trinity, right? 111 they're Broadway is, is Trinity. Yeah, it's building they own, that office building. I, yeah, 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 right? Okay, yeah. so let me support them too. Okay. Okay, so I'm, you're I'm not sorry, abstaining Mimi. from anything. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> right. We're done with it's executives. Good. Thank the good gracious Lord. Moving on. All right. Thank you. Pat. I don't even know if I can go through with my. <laughs> All right, so I have two resos. It's it's ten o'clock. We've got uh, Mimi mentioned earlier that uh, Justine and uh, Betty and Mimi and I have been in a uh, task force dealing with with Community Board Five, Six, and Four, asking for public bathrooms. Um, our our borough president Mark Levine. I forgot to thank him when he was here has also is passing legislation to ask for public bathrooms. You have a reso in front of you, which basically we are asking for public bathrooms in New York. So that's number okay. one. Number two, I'd like to take them both together, but the second one, I'm not sure if it's gonna be controversial. So you remember two months ago, we had this controversial cobblestone reso. It has completely changed. We had Landmarks come. Landmarks is in charge of the cobblestone streets. They said we cannot change the surface. We also had DOT uh, commissioner come. Commissioner Pinkar came. And the way they handle the repairs is they do put asphalt down in the areas of the street that need to be repaired later. They have a very small team to repair cobblestones. So after the asphalt is down, then they come back at you know, some date. We don't have an actual date. They come back and they do the cobblestone repair, which could take up to two years to do. We are also going to go around with Commissioner Pinkar at some later to be determined date to identify the, the most the areas of the streets that need repair immediately. So anyway, if it's not controversial, let's take them both together. I love that, Pat. <laughs> All right, let me look and see if I have hands up from anybody. Call the question. Uh, do I, I second. Hear... I have a hand up. I have a hand up too. I have my hand up too. Yeah, but I think okay. when you call the question, that's it, right? But you guys are going to hands up before. You I guys are going to like my hands, trust me. Conversation. I'm, ha guys... I'm happy to take my hand you out. Guys, just... do you... here's, here's, a good, here's a good question. I recognize people. If you're not recognized by the chair, you don't get to go. That's that's the way it rules. So shouting out is not helpful. Okay. I, I, I appreciate that, Bob. I can't see how fast enough I would like to go. However, there are some hands up. When I tell you, Lucy, one minute. Any board member who goes over one minute, hit the mute button. That's where okay. we're at. So who who do we have up? Is that Colin? Bob? Mark, yeah. Colin, Betty, and Alice, one minute, and then oh. you're muted. Tammy, please call me first. <laughs> I'll be I'll be left in a minute. Uh, Pat, there's two things missing from the resolution that we voted on. 
I know you mentioned uh, we mentioned Beach Street, but that uh, in the warehouse, but Beach Street uh, between uh, yeah. Greenwich and Hudson should be on that uh, bullet point list. You're absolutely right. We just add that. We okay. discussed that. Let's put and, that on. And there. also uh, that we mentioned uh, Vestry Street between West and and Hudson. Uh, to add that as an example of a street that's been around 100 years that is actually in pretty good shape, the right way to do it. How okay, we want remember, to word I that? think I said in the meeting that we can't really tell them how to do their job. No, not but... tell them. It's just to mention it that Vestry Street has been around for 100 years, okay, and that's I, it. I think he heard us when we were there. You can go on the walk around and point that out to him. I don't think but it, it needs to go we on the resolution. said it would be in the resolution. Right and street was supposed to go on the list. So I do think Beach Street should go on the list. Okay, next. Oh, whoever. Next. Yeah, it's okay. Colin. I just move that all uh, remaining resolutions have a limited debate to three minutes per resolution. It, this is outrageous at this point. Agreed. Agreed. I, I have Agreed. to leave soon. Okay, who else? Again. Next question. Betty, one minute. Yes, thanks. I want to make an amendment, and that is to create to add another therefore be it resolved statement. So which one? And that's the wording would be the DOT is urged to notify the MBC one, the CB1 office, if any cobblestone construction and or repairs uh, are to be done so that local and interested residents can be mobilized to closely monitor any installation we or rebuilding. That. Yep, we discussed that. Including enforcement of necessary road use restrictions. Yep, yep, I agree. We discussed that in the committee. Yep. Also, someone in the uh, public session wanted a bike uh, lane on the cobblestone street. We were told they can't do that on these streets. I can't remember exactly why, but anyway, just and there's one Alice? more question. Nope, she's done with her one minute. Alice. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure, Pat. I I can't read because the big sign of the draft is over it. But I assume um, you've got the, uh, that uh, you've said something about that the Governor's Island ferry terminal toilet should be safe, clean, and accessible. I would assume that should be for all the bathrooms, all the public bathrooms, including all of the ones that exist in our pops in our privately owned public spaces. There aren't a lot, but there are just to make sure there's it. That's in there somewhere. Thanks. Yeah, and this is the 1st of many resolutions. So about public bathrooms and we are having it go to borough board. And so, yes, if it doesn't meet all of our asks at this moment, we can put them in the next in the next. Reso. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alice. Thank you, Betty. Uh, Betty, did you have Cody's hand up? Cody's hand went down. I, I just had a quick um, thought on the cobblestone streets that they're in fact in Brooklyn and in Dumbo, uh, where their cobblestone streets restoration happened. There were granite bike paths installed, um, and also ADA compliant crosswalks um, on their cobblestone streets, and that was they weren't near landmarked. Sorry, yeah. they're not landmarked, Cody. It's a different. Oh, okay. No. Double. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. All righty. With no other hands, let's call the questions and let's do it together. Mimi, take it away. And no reports, by the way. No reports tonight. Sorry. Does anybody oppose one of these resolutions? Does anybody want to abstain or recuse themselves? Y'all the best things. Motion passes. Love it. Okay, moving along. Justine Kucha, you can do your two resolutions. No reports. That's fine, but I don't see the two resolutions on that page, Lucian. I think I sent you an email on it or a note. Can I ask you, do we need to do Skylight? Because that's already happened. Well, it, yeah, we don't really need to do it. What I need to do with Skylight is just basically with Quick thing, the skylight one said what happened, what they promised to do. I'd kind of like to have it done because I want them to come back because they didn't do what they promised. Short answer. So okay. um, that's why I'd like it done. I think Sarah uh, told me if she's still here, um, she had a, uh, and I forgot what the heck her point was, but she had a. Um, her hands one. up, let her go. Let her go, let Sarah, her. thank you. Sarah, Kathy, and then. The time on the resolution. Yes. Times that are loud. So, Lucian, um, we want to add in. I believe that was for, they they asked to, or they said that they were going to be setting up and having operations from seven a.m. till three p.m. I believe that was what it was, and I just want to put it as a whereas, just to, we're laying a foundation. But that's a friendly I, amendment. I can do that. Yeah. Kathy, 
your one minute. Sure, another another friendly amendment. Um, what was striking was that we got so little little advance notice on this, maybe two or three weeks. And I'd like to propose that for any future outdoor events that they give us two to three months. Yes, I would agree with that it's a, as a friendly amendment, um, kind of in keeping with what Mark was raising for some of his issues too. I um, think, well, keep in mind that they don't always come to them. I think it's two to three months if, if the permit process is in place. In other words, if they don't go to the Battery Park City Authority, then there's, how are they gonna come to us if it's not in existence? I think if it's planned and in existence, they need to come to the board before they get permitted. Period. But agreed, but also part of it is that I want to tell Skylight Productions or whatever they're called, yep. they need to do this because they are now a, they renting, they're renting out that space. That's the Van Gogh exhibit. That was the Fox entertainment exhibit. They are the operators of that space. So they okay. should know that we want them 3 months before, but that, that would be another friendly amendment to say, come to okay. us before these specific right. people. Cause you're right. Otherwise, you, how Kathy. can they tell us what they don't know? Yep. Sure. Anybody else? I can't. Call the question. Seconded. Mimi, take it away. Uh, are we doing just the one or are we no, doing we're both? We're doing the two because the second one, yeah. which was the um, legislation, it's it's now gone through, it's at the assembly. So we're already in great shape for that. Okay, cool. All right. Does anybody have feelings about either of these that you would like to make official? Uh, Maruso's uh, abstain on skylight. Number 1. Okay. Anyone else. Abstentions refusals. Thanks. I, I have a question. This is about the. This is um, Eric. You I have a question about the battery park city is is, is this 1. The 1 that refers that the uh, battery park city. Um, Somebody has to be um, with a primary the, resident of the of, of Battery Park City to be appointed to the board, and then I think it also it, it acknowledges majority. the yeah majority. We want a majority of residents on the board. That's what we've been asking for for ten years plus now. Okay, um, but is that the is this the one that also has that that one of the members has to have a a, a lower income? No, that's not okay. this. That was the other okay. one. Okay. That was but, yeah. That was that was a earlier version okay. that we referred to. Just okay. Yeah. Then I then I have no problem with it. Thank you. Great. Uh, so with that, I think voting is closed. No. Great. Thank you, Justine. Um, if you have questions about anything that would have been on Justine's report, please reach out to her directly, um, or chat with Lucian. Not tonight. Okay, Jason. Okay. LPC commissioners, one resolution. Yes. Betty, you have one minute. Yes, I would like to make a motion to remove the number, the actual number from the number of commissioners uh, to be added. Accepted. Thank you. Are there, I see no further hands up. Let's call the question. Second, I'm running out of coffee, by the way. Second. Thank you. Um, does anyone oppose. Or want to abstain or accuse themselves. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Jason. Jason, don't go anywhere. You're new business. Um, and for everybody who knows the new business resolution will be the roll call 1. Okay, Betty K, please. Funding for the DOT street master plan. Yeah, so this is a pretty straightforward resolution because it's coming back, but it it includes the things that have been passed in resolutions by the community board in the past. So if there are any questions or comments, otherwise you can just vote. Call the question. Second. Second. Thank you. Does anybody have, you know, something to say? Are there any abstentions? Yes, that one. Recusals, opposition. No. Thanks. Hearing done. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Whew. All righty. Alice 
blank. You have one resolution. Yep. And I just want to just for people who are hanging out for other things, all of the information for the reports can be had on our website, 250 Water Street on the 250 Water Street Brownfield Cleanup Program website and our external documents, as well as the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency Plans on their website. So all of that information, not to mention the meeting itself on YouTube. Okay, the resolution funding for an independent environmental monitor for Manhattan Detention Complex Project. Uh, any questions? Seeing no hands, I suggest we call the question. And and I my only one comment is I hope to God we won't need this and it stops. But here we go. Second. Mimi, take it away. Thing. Does anyone oppose? Want to abstain or recuse themselves from this resolution? <clears throat> Thank you. Hearing none, thank you very much. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Alice. Paul Goldstein, you have nothing but reports. You can have two minutes if you have anything you need to say. No offense intended. I'll take a pass. Governor's Island is open, wonderful activities there. We met with a new group uh, helping City Hall Park. For more information, uh, we'll post it or we'll put it in the newsletter. And the last two items we're going to continue discussion on. So nothing imminent there. Thank you, Paul, and congratulations. Great seeing you on CBS News yesterday. Okay, Youth and Ed, Trisha Joyce, you have nothing but reports. You can have two minutes if you would like. Um. I could really, we had postponements by the Charter School of the Arts. Um, Summer Rising, uh, Bob just gave us an update on the fact that it's full. Um, we were hoping that there could be some uh, movement there. It was, it was surprising. Um, there are a lot of families that were shut out of it, um, which is really unfortunate. I've actually been making some calls to see if they might do a second wave um, and what the reasons might be. Um, I think we might have it again on the next month's agenda. Harbor School, all the elected officials have signed on to a letter to the SCA to build a full size high school regulation gym on the yard outside of the school. We need to get the yard in the lease. Presently, it is not yet. Um, so we finally got the support. That letter went out this week. We are hoping it's successful. Um, we are also asking for an additional 15 feet for the pool in the courtyard. Somehow they made it 60 feet when they had 100 feet to work with. So have been working a lot on that and hope to have something for everybody next month. Thank you, Tricia. We will share a copy of the letter out in the newsletter. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Land use, Patrick and Laura. Uh-oh, did we lose Patrick? Patrick Cannell. All right, sorry, 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 sorry. There you go. The Brito... All right, um, to be very, 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 very quick. Um, we have uh, the... Uh, Manhattan Detention Center, uh, one piece of project back before us. Um, again, uh, this is something we have dealt with for the past uh, two months, uh, well, more accurately in December uh, and again in February. Um, I think, I hope everybody's read the resolution. Uh, this was brought back to us to consider some artwork designs um, and with deference to the uh, original artists, uh, we still have um, uh, some issues with um, it's in its entirety. So hopefully everyone's read the resolutions and happy to answer any questions. Patrick, I see not one hand up. Fantastic. Call the question. Second. Second. Does anybody oppose, abstain, or recuse themselves from this resolution? Thank you. Motion passes. Okay, um, before we hit new business, which will be our roll call vote, 
um, please make sure we put the resolution up. And since this is the last thing before we close the main meeting, um, do we have anything else because from the nominating committee? I think we have one more nomination that it, well, I know we have one more nomination that has uh, come in. Um, let me take a look. Uh, Colin uh, nominated um, uh, for um, assistant secretary. Um, Jeff, can I clarify? I was talking with Colin and uh, I was under the impression that he was, uh, uh, I didn't know that Mimi was assistant secretary and then she's going for secretary. So, uh, in deference to him wanting to continue, uh, he's going to want, he's secretary now and then wants to be assistant secretary. I'm going to withdraw uh, my nomination and nominate Colin. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Um, so Okay. This was a setup, wasn't it? You guys just <laughs> I didn't yeah. know. I didn't know. I thought Mimi was secretary, so I was, so I was confused though. So, but yeah, I, I, so I really, I, was... I really wanted out. But okay. Okay. <laughs> at the at the end of the day, all I want to say is thank you, Mark, for your willingness to step up. That's yep. actually really heavily appreciated. Thank you, Colin, for your willing to continue and I'm like a step down, guys. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're switching. No, no, yeah. It's uh, no, but I mean, for both of you, that is, uh, accepting additional responsibilities is always, um, I'm grateful for the effort. So thank you both. And, and I'll don't always worry, help Mark. if you ever need it. I can be like, oh, don't worry, Mark. I'm going to find something for you to do. <laughs> no fears now. Oh, that I know. oh, see, I should have kept my mouth closed. I there accept. I accept. Let's go. go home. Come on. I accept. All right. Let's go. New business. Let's get that resolution up for 60 Wall Street. And Jason, take us home. Well, uh, you know, I, there's some chatter back on email between some of us on the committee about adding stuff. I, I'm not actually following it well enough because I'm half asleep. But uh, Alice or or Gerald, do you want to say anything that's different no, than I, what's I, up on the screen? I, I think at this point, you know, you could parse out. But I think the basic tenant here is that we're not we're, that we're rejecting the proposal and i think that's enough said i, I you know there's going to be a lot of back and forth and i think at 1021 maybe a, a simple way you wrote it is fine but that, that's my perspective on it. I, it it's it's a rejection of the proposal um and you know if you want to go into more detail maybe we do that on a, another okay i'm i'm fine with that as Sorry, well when we review the um uh there are two hands that are up. So, okay. Alex, if you are, are you done? I guess, I guess so. Um, I'm going to be the, uh, there are three hands up. I'm going to be the fourth. Everybody gets one minute or Lucy mutes you. Bruce, Bob, Gerald, and me, and I could be muted. I'm going to just say that I find this extremely, uh, without precedent, the sentiment of the committee, the actual voting committee, was against rejection of this proposal. The idea of a rejection had lost, had lost. I don't understand how a new business, a new proposal, unequivocal, rejecting the proposal has come about. What was the procedure? Who wrote the re resolution? What happened to the, to the uh, sense of the committee that was not ruling, but presumably how things work here. I don't understand what happened. Bruce, I think you're respectfully, you're just dead wrong about the feeling in the room. Most people didn't care for the presentation. You came in, you said you loved it, like you, you built it with your own hands and and you come around and you keep telling everybody how the sentiment of the room was a way that it wasn't. So respectfully, okay. I wrote the resolution. Don't start shouting back at me, Bert, Bruce, while you're muted. I wrote the resolution. If you don't like it, vote against it. That's it. Okay? Be a big boy about it, okay? First of all, okay. I stop, stop, personal stop, attacks. Stop. Both, uh-uh. Nope. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Both of you, stop. As chair, I'm telling both of you to stop. Bob Townley, Gerald. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now that you've called on me, I want to, with, with, when I'm trying to understand the rules, I want to call the question. It's on paper. People could vote yes or no. I'd like to call the question. Seconded. Second. Okay, that means that no more hands are up. Gerald's doesn't stay up and mine doesn't. It's been called. It's been uh, it's been widely seconded. 
and off we go. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, right. This is a roll call. Mimi. And Maruso? Yes. Thank you. Blank? Sounding yes. Thank you. Brown Kennedy? Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you. Cameron? Cameron, yes. Thank you. Collie? Cassell. Sorry. Cassell. It, yes, it makes sense. Awesome. Collie? Thought I saw you on there, Collie. She is. She's got some. Oh. Come back to her. Okay, I'll get, I'll get back to you. Uh, Chang? Chang, no. All right. Chapman? Chapman, yes. All right. Oops. Um, Charcutian? Charcutian votes yes. All right. Coleman? Coleman votes no. All right. Corman? Corman, yes. Kucha? No. All right. Uh, Curtis? Curtis, yes. Curtis, yes. Airman? Airman, no. No. Flores? Flores, Flores yes. Yes. Flynn, yes. Forsberg? Yes, with a friendly amendment to oh. add my oh. Oh, no testimony. Yeah, you can't really oh. do that right oh, now. Jerry. No, Jerry. Um, no, not acceptable. Quiet, quiet. Everybody, Friedman? quiet. We're in the middle of taking the vote. Me, keep going. You have to unmute Mimi so she can call names, guys. <laughs> I didn't notice. Sorry. Friedman? <laughs> Wait. Friedman, are you there, buddy? No. Froman? Yes, Froman, yes. Thank you. Galloway? Galloway, no. No, thank you. Goldstein? Goldstein, no. No. Grant? Grant, yes. Thank you. Gupta? Gupta, yes. Thank you. James? James, abstain. Thank you. Joyce? Joyce, yes. Thank you. Ju? Ju, yes. Thank you. K? Okay. K, hey, strongly no. Strongly no. Thank you. Canal? Canal, yes. Yes. Kettering? Kettering, no. No. Lerner? Yes. Yes. Lewinson? Lewinson, no. No. Lynn? Yes. Yes. Lyon? Yes. Yes. Mahoney? Mahoney, no. No. Melter? Tammy? Melter, yes. Ah, thank you. Minsley? Um, abstain. I don't know enough about this. All right. Thank you. More? Why, oh, yes. Yes. Schneck? Bob? Okay. Uh, Star? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Song? Jimmy Song, yes. Oh, yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a no. It's Laura Starr. No. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. Uh, Vera Song? Yes. Yes. Townley? Townley abstains. Abstains. Thank you. You? You votes no. No. Zelter? Zelter abstains. Abstains. And I need to um, a couple corrections. I put the wrong letter. Jason Friedman's an attendee. He needs to be moved over so he can vote. And uh, is Cassell able to vocalize a vote? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Is that Cassell? Uh, Collie? Sorry. Jason so sorry. Friedman votes getting... yes. Okay. Jason Friedman votes yes. And. 
Yeah. Kali. Looking for your name in the thing. I'm making an assumption that Kali is now gone. All right, so the um, we've got 26 in favor, 12 opposed, and four abstain. Motion passes. And with that, at 1029, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Hi, Next everybody. month.